Hey, oh. Thanks for coming in, Steve. Uh, hey, people were, doing? yeah, we were just talking about um, how Arn blocked you, and um, I didn't want to go too much into detail because I know that there was something in the works between you and him, and I thought you might give an account on on your of your own accord. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, I can't talk very loud. Uh, well, I mean, he's he had me blocked on Twitter for a while, but it, we've always um, we were talking on Facebook. He was a member of the Rich Bay community. Um, he's always told me that uh, if he makes a mistake or you know is is wrong, especially on the logic or philosophy, to point it out to him. But when I do so, he's very adamant to to, to get pushback rather than just accept the correction or even look into it, even when other people have been verifying exactly what I've said. People that are much more knowledgeable than I am. Um, obviously, Ozzy has looked over this stuff. Ozzy was watching the the entire um, discussion. He was just mortified uh basically at what uh you know Arn was was trying to to, to say the discussion was on was I, I was trying to point out the logical inconsistency of the system where Arn has his use of terminology being so sloppy that one it leads to ambiguity or two that leads to a contradiction of what he has um as far as the statement of uh american atheists because american atheists has a specific, specific position their position is atheism is not the disbelief that god's a uh, god of gods right well they're using the term disbelief as i'm using the term disbelief as well as any book that i found and any citation i found on the term disbelief it is an epistemic status that that asserts the negation of the proposition you're saying p is false that is how it's interpreted ubiquitously throughout the literature that is found from wreckers that is found from russell um same thing with denial, right? If I deny P, I'm accepting the rejection. That's rejectionism. Um, Frege, Geech, um, a couple other th sources all agree with that as well. What I was trying to explain to him was, look, Arn, you told Stephen Hoyt, who knows about these things, uh, that, is, is not atheism, that disbelief is merely lack of belief, right? And I said, well, if disbelief is only lack of belief, that is incongruent with, with the message that American Atheists is putting out because they're saying atheism is not a disbelief. And you're saying it is a dis, disbelief is just lack of belief. Since both of them agree that atheism is just a lack of belief, which I obviously don't agree with, but arguendo, um, if, 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 if there's a contradiction to be had, unless there's a equivocation issue, which there was, but the, the apparent contradiction is that Atheist, according to American atheists, atheism is not the dis disbelief of gods, and according to Arn, atheism was the disbelief of gods, right? So there was an apparent contradiction there, and I realized that the contradiction was only because of equivocation issues. After I explained to the Arn how disbelief is actually used, he finally changed his position on that, although he never notified me of this. He, he basically said, well, why are you still going on about this? Ever since you told me that atheism, you know, me that disbelief meant this, I haven't used it as unbelief since. Well, he kind of was. He was citing an 1827 Webster Dictionary for the term disbelief and trying to relate it as not believing or, or lacking a belief. His position on that. But then say to him well the same problem you're having with the word deny and he cited me the webster dictionary and i looked up deny and denial from webster dictionary and both of them said the acceptance of negation or acceptance acceptance of the contrary it aren't denying p is the same thing your webster dictionary where it says atheism is the disbelief of gods is not saying what you think it's saying it is saying atheism is the belief that gods don't exist it is affirming the the consequent or affirming the negation that's when he blocked me. That was it. I was having a very civil conversation conversation with him about you know logic. Um, I, you know, I find it just, just a little disconcerting when you know you're having a polite conversation and it's on a topic that is based upon material facts, right? There's a material fact to be had there. The logic is right or the logic is wrong. Um, the information is there. The information is not there. It's not a subjective opinion. Um, when we disagree on opinions, if I say, "Hey, Michael, you know." I'm a Republican, you're a Democrat, uh, or something like that, and we disagree on something political. There's there's some ideological things there, but basically a lot of that is very opinionated, right? I can't say there's a lot of material facts to be had in politics any longer. But in logic, would you agree? Yeah, uh, I'm actually more curious about like him saying or this idea that he changed his mind and then 
he did change his mind on the display. Seems... He, yeah, he didn't tell me though. He uh, there's no notion of that. Well, he, that just seems like something Aaron Ra would do. That's like behavior is consistent with somebody who's like too. You read the thread. Uh, well, no, I haven't yet. Somebody posted it, and I was like, well, like I imagine there's probably 183 fucking comments too, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I just figured it was probably better to hear it. Uh, As Brian Greener said, personally. Brian Greener said, why are you quoting Webster and then saying you're not agreeing with Webster? Because he's like, well, I'm just citing the dictionary. And, you know, I'm not saying that I agree with Webster. I'm just citing what it says. And I'm like, well, what, 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 what is that point of that then? I'm confused here. So you're saying that after all this conversation, you were able to achieve what, like, Ozzy didn't, for instance, in convincing him. Um, oh, totally. That was his word. Is a, is a, no, no, not atheism. I convinced him. That, no, no, no. I didn't convince him about atheism. He's never going to change his mind about that. But he, I convinced him that disbelief is considered to be the acceptance of negation. And so he's no longer saying atheism is um, a, a disbelief. disbelief. Right. Although, although yeah. it is a disbelief in the literature, right? So it's the funniest thing. He's got half of it right, but still gets half of it wrong. And I've been talking to Ozzy like all day today, and Ozzy's just busting up laughing because he, 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 he and I just look at this, and we both. Aaron, you need to just stop arguing on topics you are just ill-equipped to argue and listen to people that maybe know a little bit more about it. I'm one of those people that's not an expert. I know enough about it, but I get fact-checked consistently. On my blogs, I run through people. Ozzy just proof-checked a blog that I wrote the other day. He found an error with it that I thought existed. I just couldn't place it, but he helped me find it, right? So I, I do have people like check into this stuff. But that was a minor, to me, a minor uh, thing that he he changed his position on disbelief. Because I guarantee it, five five days from now, he's going to be saying the same thing. Well, atheism is disbelief. He's just going to go back to his regular thing. Concepts well enough to understand the terminology. Well, you understand. Well, I mean, and I know you know this, so this is kind of a rhetorical. Well, I shouldn't even pause it as a as a rhetorical question, but like you, know. we, we both know that he's doing that as a matter of political strategy. Like he and David Silverman agree that the term atheism should be a, a wider tent than the philosophical definition allows for. I completely agree with that. Yeah. And a matter of fact, it's funny because when Ozzy had discussed this with Aaron and he pointed out that it was politically motivated, matter of fact, Fighting God by David Silverman, he makes it very clear that it's politically motivated, right? Um, Dr. F uh, Paul Draper in, in SCP, he even points out that there's political reasons for these things. But then you have people on these videos going, oh, you guys are conspiracy nuts trying to make it out to be a political conspiracy when it's not. And I'm like, we're not saying it's conspiracy, but it's politically driven. That's not how, that's a material fact, I think, because they admit it. David Silverman has been in Helena's hangouts, uh, and he, he fully admitted that was a political thing, if Helena is here and she remembers. Uh, I'm only partially listening, but yes, of course, yes. yes. Yeah, there's all kinds of reasons for, for sticking to that idea. And, and, and that's a fair argument to be had, right? I, I get that argument. A genetically modified skeptic runs that argument. And, and, and I have defeaters for it, but it's a different argument, right? Well, my goal is to do this. Therefore, I'm going to use the terminology that best helps me obtain that goal. And I'm going to use the colloquial understanding of atheism to do so. I get that argument. But Aaron doesn't understand the distinctions between these things. He, for how long did he argue that there was no philosophical definition of atheism? And then he argued that the only definition of atheism that was based upon a belief was because theists had invaded their educational system. I had, I had a guy argue the other day that the guy who wrote SCP, the guy that wrote atheism, um, the, Dr. Paul Draper, was a theist. I'm like, no. No, he, he's not. Um, are you, you the, guy cited, the article before him was not a theist either. JDC smart. Steve, you cited the American atheists. I just wanted to check out what they said. Um, and they, they say, they quote, say what's that? I, agree, I know a quote. They say, quote, atheism is not the disbelief of God or gods. Um, it is or the, it is not the disbelief or denial of gods. It is the lack of belief. Yeah. And they say that um, older dictionaries defined atheism as a belief there is no God. And then it says, clearly, theistic influence taints these definitions. The hey, fact that, there you go. <laughs> there you go. Well, let me read the rest. The fact that dictionaries often define atheism as there is no God betrays the monotheistic influence. 
without the monotheistic influence, the definition would at least read, there are no gods. Oh, so let me, person... Well, can I correct? There's, there's something to be said on that. There is an influence, but when we, when, when, throughout the literature, there's some kind of standard that's out there. For example, a lot of times, and you, you, you're, you're read up on this stuff. I know you are. Um, you, you, when, when you read something along philosophical lines, they say she a lot, right? They'll say like she, she does, you know, believes that. They use the female sense, right? And the same thing with the word God. When, they, when they're talking about the disbelief of God, they're also including that to mean all gods. David, David Lewis was an atheist, but he believed that there are gods. So, oh, hey, well, no, no, David Lewis did not believe that there was God. David Lewis was was a, 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 a anti realist. He was a, a modal anti realist. He believed there was God, but, but that they, well, no, he was a, no. Actually, let me correct this. He, he was, was a, a modal, modal realist. realist. He believed it. Well, modal realist, but when, uh, the, point, the point is, is when you when you did he believe God? I just had this discussion with actually. Uh, you guys don't know Dr. Graham Priest. Ever heard of him? Yeah. When when yeah. you. Talk, when you quantify unrestrictedly over literally everything, then there are gods. Um, but there aren't actually any gods. Because actually is basically just a demonstrative that picks out whatever world you're in. So the world that we're, we're in is devoid of gods. But there literally are other worlds where like Zeus. Oh, if you're a moral realist like Lewis was. Yeah, yeah. I was kind of... I'm a moral anti-realist, so I get that their gods exist in other possible worlds in this actualized world because it's indexical. So for this world, this our own possible world, this is the only one we exist in. Uh, so this is our actual world, right? Uh, I'm, just, I'm just pointing out how you could really probe, really probe the idea of atheism. Like, is atheism the, the view that there are no gods, or is it the view that um, actually there are no gods? It's. Oh, not- I, I, I like those nuanced discussions, but come on, we're dealing with art. I'm, I mean, really. Um, but yeah, no, I, I agree. I agree with you. Wait, anyway. What if a uh, what if a god concept is incoherent, right? Because in order for it to exist, it would have to be logically possible. Now, there are some that possibilities world. that okay. For example, like the the problem of evil, right? When you're looking at the problem of evil and you have the the omni traits, uh, yeah, that is an incongruent system. That that system cannot be um, existing because it's inconsistent. That means that all propositions cannot be true simultaneously. So if you have all the, the traits, but omnibenevolent and omnipotent and omni-knowledgeable and all this other stuff, and evil exists, then yeah, I think that the Anselm God like that probably would be argued that it is logically impossible and could not exist in any possible world. But you couldn't have a necessary being, though, in like all possible worlds, though, or like in a possible world, because it would have to uh, exist in like all possible worlds which would refute the whole purpose. It so have the maximum have great view. properties. If, if it has maximal great properties, then Plantinga argues that um, if it exists in one possible world, it would have to exist in all modal possible worlds. What the hell do I know, man? I'm just a schmuckatelli off the street, man. Um, yeah, it's like uh, that modal S5 fuckery. <laughs> like yeah. that if it, it exists in some possible worlds it exists in all possible yeah worlds. exactly that's that that's Steve the McCray? Model 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 argument. yeah that's me yeah what up steve hey, buddy um, so steve i was looking at the history sorry tom do you want to say something i didn't yeah. uh yeah i want to know what's going on with this debate with debate with ace is this is this tom tom is this tom yeah this is tom yeah, on boxes tom. I, I, Tom unboxing. I, <laughs> I don't know what the hell. What do you go by? Oh, man, I don't think Steve man. knows about the unboxing. I go by Tom unboxing. No. I yeah. I whatever. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, I, what is not, that about? No, I it's kind of, no. Oh. I. It's not whatever. It's. Is, is it related to porn or something? What? what? I don't know. Steve, I don't know. Steve, Steve, Steve. Some of us may have. Some of us may have jerked off to it, but is that good? I don't judge. But, you know. I, I don't judge, man. I've seen his videos. Matter. Some of his videos are jerk offable. Yeah. What? That's a puzzle piece. <laughs> what? Have you so watched some of the DD stuff? Right you don't get off on that? Come on. Oh. Like, I don't know what's going on here, on. man, but I'll just give you a link to. I'll give you a Is link Steve's to my to video. Ace? Yeah, I'm supposed to debate no Ace. I'm not debating Ace. No, Ace is supposed to debate. We were supposed to find somebody for Ace to debate. Oh. Yeah. Ace wants to debate. Sean the yeah, moon I landing. I did that on quantum mechanics the other night. Oh god. 
I think we're gonna like set him up with maybe Sean Hufford Man, or, or Jerry. He's about to get straight racked. Bring in someone. Well, I don't. About to get I home. think he's. I think he's actually apprehensive about discussing with Reds because uh, he and Reds have a history. Or the fact that Reds will kick his ass. Um, did Did Ace follow up with the uh, photogrammetry guy? I haven't heard more from. He him says. He, he says he did. But I haven't heard any conclusions from it. I, I, we're, we're working on it. But anyways, uh, Michael, does that kind of wrap it up in a nutshell as far as like what, what happened? I mean, I here's the thing. Look, I, I don't know if you saw my little proclamation that I put out on Facebook and I, and I put it on Twitter. A uh, few spelling errors, but I fixed the most of them on Twitter or it's my Facebook. But see, and I've noticed with uh, AR and AA and all these atheist organizations that uh, they're becoming dogmatic as, as can be. And anybody who disagrees with them that is not a theist. They're going to end up shutting. Um, they recently did this with astrality rules. They've done it with me. They've done it with people that agree with me. They, you know, they just basically shut anybody who's, oh, well, you, you, you agree with Steve? We can't have you around kind of thing. Um, it's still disconcerting. Um, these are supposed to be, you know, people that are uh, promoting uh, the marketplace of ideas, right, and, and opinions and, and, and logic and reason. And right. I'm sorry, but my arguments... But so far, they're pretty valid. Um, I've had very little, if any, decent criticism. In fact, the only criticism that I think that was only substantial was Stephen Hoyt gave me a really uh, huge thing that he wrote. But even he said it's still a good argument. Um, high praise from Steve Hoyt, if you if you know who he is. Uh, yeah, of you. course, yeah. But, uh, but even he said, yeah, it's a good argument. It's just that you know, you, 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 it, there are some ways that people could probably try to poke at this. Um, but when, when I'm trying to explain material facts to people about some of the narratives that the ACA and the American Atheists put out, I'm the, I'm the, I'm the guy that's promoting sedition. I'm the guy that's the heretic. I'm the guy that they cannot have people listening to because I am thwarting their narrative and their political agenda. Aren't literally have said that to me. McGray. I am saying I am causing a rift or a schism in the atheist community um, and I'm like, well, I'm flattered that I'm having that much effect, but maybe you should listen to the people that are actually in the know that are telling you that I'm not fucking horribly wrong on this stuff, right? I mean, uh, you go to the you go yeah. to the people that know their shit, right? I mean, Michael, I've had so many conversations with you because I trust your opinion, and I ask, and I do I not fact check as much as possible to make sure that I'm not putting out mis misinformation? What, Steve? Why does your audio sound like poop? Because I'm I'm talking quiet because I can't talk loud. No, it's, no, like, it's like it's like roboting and like artifacting. Oh, I, I don't know. know. It's almost like yeah. it's close to his mic or something. Yeah. Sounds good here. Uh, is it? Well, yeah, it sounds good on my end. It sounds yeah, awful. I think everybody's roboting a little bit off and on. Could be the server. Okay, let me try to do yeah, the server. Let me also turn off my roboting to me right now. You change it to the central United States. <laughs> All right, I changed to central. There we go. Where, That's where, smart edge right where? there. What's that interruption okay. vendor? I mean, wisdom vendor? <laughs> there he is. I mean, I got a little echo. That no, sounds better. But, but I just want, I just want to clarify. Look, at, I got nothing against any of these. Nothing against these groups. And, and you know, I have the utmost respect for Arn and, and Matt for what they do. I think that the way that they obviously have discussions with theists, you know, I agree with them almost, almost, you know, wholly on everything. Wait, why though? I don't understand. I mean, the guy well, is I mean, I, I, literally I, I, an I, asshole I, to you. Because that's a personal thing, right? I mean, Aaron, when it comes to like creationism, is spot on. Now, does he get some biology wrong? Yes. And the reason I only know that because I have experts in biology like Herman Mays telling me Aaron fucked this up and Aaron fucked that up. And I'm like, okay. And, and I, I accept that because I don't have a PhD in biology. But I do know a lot of the stuff that he talks about with creationism is, is right. All right. And so. You know, I'm against creationism, and so we have a common foe there. But he fucked Ket, Ket Hoven up when he brought up uh, um, that the law of a monophyly. Oh, he I doesn't mean, know that was any a... of those things are. Kent doesn't know shit. Yeah. But creationism is dumb, Steve. Why do you even bother? Well, because you still got people that believe it, right? It's I mean, entertaining. Well, it's entertaining. Yeah. That's true. But but I've I've convinced people to leave creationism before. Hunter Bailey left creationism. Wayne Fillmore left creationism. Um, I guess many other people that, that I think are wavering. 
Um, so, I mean, we have an effect on people. I get messages all the time. Hey, Steve, because of you, you know, I, I changed my positions on this, or I no longer believe this, or I believe this now, or I'm going back to college. I've had numerous people who tell me they're going back to school. Um, I didn't realize what a big influence non sequitur in, in my channel and the things I've said over the last six years have influenced people. It didn't even dawn on me until maybe last year or something where I got this one message from somebody who basically told me that they're going back to college to finish their degree. They left young earth creationism. They, um, you know, realized that a lot of the shit there, they, they believe was complete bullshit. Um, and all because he, they found my channel around saying, I want to change a theological position, right? I, I'm not, I'm not promoting an agenda. I'm not promoting agnosticism, not promoting atheism. That is, I think, why I'm getting a following is because I don't have a dogma or and I don't have an agenda. Believe the things that, you know, yeah. formulate your opinions, but accept the facts as there are facts. Yeah. Have Have you finally pinned down what atheism is? I've always, I mean, it's not a matter of what it is. It's a matter of how you want to define it. And if you define it a certain way, you need to accept the baggage that comes along with it. That's always been my argument. Matt gets it completely wrong. Well, I, he, he thinks my I argument think, is, uh, oh, atheism can only be one way. If you don't agree with that, then you're wrong. I've never said that. Yeah, I think uh, Ozzy's done a good job of defending the idea that atheism has some sort of burden of justification. I mean, there's a lot hours of content on him talking about that. Oh, yeah, but I've also gone for one step further. I've I've taken on board what Dr. Michael Martin has written and Dr. Malik, and I formulated you know this argument that even um, not accepting a proposition requires a burden of proof. Yeah, I'm just saying that like uh, I I just don't know why people are still arguing with you about it. Well, because they don't want to go look at the material facts. That requires reading. And and or and comprehension. Right. Look at Aaron. Aaron, look, literally, Aaron was reading the post that I showed him, the quotes from his own source, and he was reading it in a completely different light. And I'm like, wow. Even and this is again when uh, 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 even Ozzy's going, you know, can you read this correctly? How is it so, that difficult so, to read this, man? Yeah. So what's funny is like Ozzy and I have had this conversation before, where Aaron calls him. I mean. I mean, I don't know if he's actually used this, these terms, but he's called himself a professional atheist, but he's just entirely unfamiliar with the ph philosophical yeah. literature yeah. on the topic. Totally. He's, 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 he's just completely unaware of the philosophical implication. For telling people about the philosophical understandings of these terms, I'm the bad guy. I'm the one that's, you know, the, the heretic in all this. Well, I'm not entirely convinced topics. that you exist, though. That's true, but but have, 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 <laughs> I'm kidding. Dude. You hang out with very intelligent people that are well researched on all this stuff and well knowledgeable. And I've had a lot of them on my show. I've had Doctor, you know, Graham Oppie on my channel. Um, I've been talking to Graham, Doctor Graham. Who you Tree. should have on more, by the way. Like I don't know why um, we should see more of Graham Oppie, don't you think? I think that guy is very guy. articulate. Yeah, Graham Oppie is so nice. Yeah, very, very nice. Yeah, he's a busy he's guy. Debating. I don't know why he, but why did he debate Josh? Wait, well, I don't get that. Josh Brister. No, oh, yeah, yeah Josh Brister. Why Paul, yeah, oh, Paul Josh Brister. Yeah, yeah. Based of his time. <laughs> um, you know, I, By the way, when, I when I was an undergraduate, um, thinking about graduate school, um, I, e I like Facebook messaged mm -hmm. Graham Oppie out of the blue because. I, back then, before I before I started applying, I would just like Facebook ad everyone, um, like anyone that Jack would Facebook friend, and I like sent him a message and told him I was applying and I like, asked for advice. And looking back, I realized that it was like incredibly pushy. It was like asking way too much of someone who doesn't even know who I am. And Graham Oppie like really went out of his way and was like really helpful and really nice. It's really nice. Like, five He's years later. Yeah. I hadn't talked to him since then, but like I had subsequently gone on to grad school and all this stuff. I like e sent him a message and I complimented him. I was like, look, um, like you really go out of your way to like do all of this stuff. Like you go on these, po these like podcasts, you do, do these interviews. Like, you don't have to do any of that, but like we really appreciate that you're like bringing philosophy to, to public audiences. Uh, no, he, um, he's very kind. Um, very, very likable, very personable, very, very knowledgeable. Um, 
often, you know, and that's one of the reasons I wanted him on the show because I was like, I, I quote him and I quote a bunch of other people as well. Um, but not like Josh Brister. I mean, I don't know if you guys watched the debate with him and uh, Vish, Vishu the other day, but holy crap. Did you see? Oh, did Vishu, you see... Vishu, oh, did you see me? Uh, Steve, uh, I debated Josh Brister on his YouTube channel the other day, me and Danny. Wait, uh, were, you, were you in that debate too, Yuri? Fuck off, Jack. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> well, Jack, what, what were you saying, Jack? Wait, who did I was saying that, that that you should see the debate that Josh Brister had with Danny, um, and I think y- Yuri can be heard. In, you know, <laughs> oh, that's uh, so mean. <laughs> Jack. No, Yuri well, actually. How, how, how could it be worse actually, than anything that Yuri actually landed a good, um, you know, one-two punch uh, at one point, and it, it it's pretty entertaining. Yeah, Yuri basically gosh, opened, man. and then they just basically said, "Look, we want to move on," and they just changed the subject because they couldn't address it. Well, Danny, took yeah, we talked about the Kalam, and then we talked about how God couldn't be omnipotent and have intentional we states. Raise objections, and then the usual they just stuff. said, "Let's move on." Is is that is um, that is that Jack's argument that God somehow is reduced to just dispensational states? Right, that, yeah, because um, because the idea is right that um, typically we take intentionality to be normative, which means you can be in or out of a court, right, with a standard. So, like, if I intend to reach for a glass of water, I have the potential to fail, right? But omnipotence implies that you don't have the potential to fail, right? Fail, so, if right. God is taken to be an agent, right, and has those first order intentional properties, then there's a contradiction there. Because in order for him to have those intentional properties, he would have to have the possibility to fail. You know, that's t- that's the idea essentially. Yeah, 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 of course. So they they got frustrated and said, "Let's just change the subject." And then in their closing argument, they they basically dishonestly said, "Oh, you couldn't refute our kalam." Well, it was that's what Josh did the other day. He's like, "You can't refute the kalam." Really can't... Yeah, Josh loves this. Oh, uh, uh, here's 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 what it is. Uh, the kalam cosmological argument and the argument for contingency, you lose. He doesn't even. Well, he, I don't think he even knows what the arguments entail because I've never heard him actually well, argue the argument. Well, that's Bristol, what's funny is Bristol because he, there was a one point where he's like laying out a syllogism, and then Yuri asks, "Well, what's the argument for premise one?" And it's just like kill screen, Josh Brister. <laughs> I, well, I wanted. I, I was going to do that on the after show. I because if he wasn't on the column, I was going to ask him about premise one, and I was going to ask him, "Do you understand that in quantum mechanics, in the Copenhagen interpretation?" There are events without causation that have no cause. This whole notion of, of an action and reaction um, it only exists because we observe them to, to exist. There's no law, actually, of cause and effect, right? There's no law in physics that says if you have an effect, it had to come from a cause. That's only because we accept for certainty some, some, kind of a, some kind of a principle sufficient reason of some sorts, right? That if A, then B, if we see... Uh, contiguous thing uh, uh, events right a sequence of events so when it comes to quantum mechanics there's no information in that system prior to an event so if i look at an atom and that atom goes and goes spontaneous fission or weak nuclear decay that is completely stochastic there is no way ever possible to ever know when those events going to occur it's not that we don't it's not that we don't have access to the information there's no local hidden variable in that system that we're not that we're missing it is for the fact that there is no variable at all there's nothing of any consequence period to have information for us to ever have knowledge of when those, that event's going to take place so it is literally an event without a cause i want to know how he would respond to that but he didn't show up to the uh the after show hmm. well i mean still true well, i don't know well brister's closing in that though was simply him saying that he presented arguments that you didn't respond to, which was complete bullshit. Well, yeah. he didn't present the argument. He just said, Kalam, that's not an argument. Well, he tried to present it, I guess. But I would have, yeah, but I would have asked him that question there, and he would have been like, what? what? Who? So I think uh, people. it would be great to have, um, this is kind of a tangent, but I, I think everybody else in the room is kind of wondering about it too, but like, uh, we're really excited that to hear back from you and Kyle that you would be willing to entertain ASTIS 
on the moon landing shit. Because uh, we'd really like to hear him argue with, with yeah, but here's, your but resident only, experts. My only concern is this. Um, Ace, if it's the Aces I'm thinking about, he, he's the race realist, right? Yeah, so to yeah, so to speak. Yeah, uh, no, he, he he's a racist. For, um, him and Iron Nation. Um, <laughs> yeah. well, that's true. Yeah. That's my only concern. Now, we people don't know who he is. Why do people want to give the? Why do people want to give Aces the time of day? That's what. I yeah, I'm not a big fan of him. Trust me. Well, it's hard to give him the time of day when clocks don't measure time. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Hey, uh, How is he still even yeah, around? That was good. Yeah. How's he got his ass? How did he get his ass beat too many times? I mean, I, I don't. Understand. These people love a punishment. Is Asus the same as Ace? I always, I always. He's get, our clown. I always yeah. get right. Ace, Asus, Dio, and Shameless confused. Oh, that's They're understandable. All- yeah, me, me too. We, we've known them for five, six years, and we still get them confused. Steve, what happened to your buddy Rodney? <laughs> One. Are you there, Steve? Uh, yeah, my buddy who? Rodney. Oh, the PhD Rodney. Rodney, the yes, the doctor of philosophy. Yeah, he um he he had some he has some personal issues with alcohol and drugs. Mm-hmm. Um, he's he's kind of getting over it. Um, he he moved a few times. Um, so eventually I heard from him when he's when he's uh, smart guy though. He's got his PhD when he was like twenty eight. Mm. I don't remember that part, but I hope he gets better. Yeah. Thanks for coming in, Steve. I appreciate it. Everybody was kind of clamoring over the the R and versus U. Well, let me know what you guys think. I mean, now I, I, not going to happen, which I'm kind of pissed off about because no, no, no. He's still going to be on the show. Of... Oh, really? Is Michael yeah, Bryan still friends? Something? Yeah, I mean, it's just he doesn't uh, want to talk about this kind of stuff. I, I still think he'll be on the show. I don't have an issue with that. It's not my not my deal. Um, completely irrelevant to to, to our. Well, if you discussion. don't want him around anymore, we can always send Godless back on him. Uh, oh no, I, I have nothing against Aaron. It's just I want to know from you guys because you guys know philosophy a hell of a lot more than I could ever know it. Uh, though I've come a long fucking way because um, I took the time to actually read shit. It's amazing what you could do when you read stuff, right? Um, but I arguing anything incorrectly? I mean, I'm trying to explain to him epistemic statuses of belief, disbelief, and suspensing of judgment. Talking to a toaster. I mean, he's been called out on these sort of misunderstandings before in philosophy of the place. That's why he left. I mean, Stephen Hoyt called him out on these mistakes, you know? I mean, like I said, I, 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 I want to know because, like I said, I have the utmost respect for Aaron. Um, I, I never would disrespect him. I really want him to to um, understand these concepts. Um, but it's a little disconcerting when uh, I and Stephen Hoyt and other people have pointed out to Aaron that he's just he's just wrong on these things, um, not understanding the concepts. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, I was watching today. Aaron had sent me a video that I've actually seen before, but it was when when – and Arn has sent me the video too before. But was do you guys remember when Arn had a discussion with the Christian philosopher John? Um, oh, what was his name? Um, the professionally moderated. Oh no, he was outside in a foyer, and okay. uh, he was just talking to this Christian philosopher named John. Oh, I kind of remember that. Yeah, it was like really close camera, and it was him, yeah. and like maybe one or two. Magna was there. there. Possibly. It's yeah. uh, it's pronounced foyer. Yay. You know, like a Fourier transformation? No, just like okay. Fourier. No, but like, anyways, uh, the inner part of house, right after the door. So, 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 long story short, he, um, huh. he, uh, he was talking to the to Arn about um, facts, and and Arn had said to me a long time ago that one of the reasons he doesn't like philosophy is he's one time he argued with a philosopher who didn't. He didn't understand what flaw, what facts was. He was arguing what the word facts meant, kind of thing, right? And so he had sent me that video at the time, and I was like, "Well, Aaron, the, the guy's kind of right on this. I mean, I can see his point." And then I rewatched it just this morning, knowing what I know now in fresh eyes. I was like, "Well, he's not just right; he's absolutely freaking right." Because what he was arguing was this: Aaron said, "Look, it, it is a fact we're an animal, 
And the uh, philosopher is trying to explain to him, look, it, it's only a fact that we're an animal because you're defining an animal with certain characteristics. If you accept that those characteristics, multicellular, uh, homo chemiop uh, was a homo uh, chemotropic, um, with that, what are some of the other ones? Uh, um, bipedal, ambulatory, whatever the conditions are for, for being an animal. If you meet those conditions, right, then yes, by biological definitions, because of the categories, then we are animals. But if you don't accept the definition, there's no material fact of the universe that says we are animals. That is something only because of description, right? That is something that is an arbitrary category that is defined with certain properties. That is a fact only because it is defined to be that way, right? So you can't just say, to, as Arne would say, well, it, it's a universal fact that animal you, that uh, humans are animals. Well, no, it's, it's not a universal fact. It's a fact in the scope of biology is defined to be that way. And if you accept that definition, then we're animals. If you reject that definition of animals, we're not animals, right? Because if you're, you can yeah, argue... Taxonomies are social constructs. Well, you can argue, you can argue... You can argue that it's um, like a brute animal, right? People will say, well, we're not animals because they're using the term animal as a brute animal, right? And humans don't fall under brute, brute animals. So under that definition, we are not animals. So you can't say it's a fact we're an animal because there's different ways you can look at the word. It's, an, it's, a, it's, a, it's a description. Iron, for some reason, has a huge problem misunderstanding the difference between descriptive and prescriptive. He doesn't get it. Wait, just why, fundamentally doesn't get it. Why can't you say that it's a fact of the matter that we are animals once the term animal is disambiguated appropriately? If it's disambiguated and the person accepts the, 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 the definition, right? If somebody says, yes, if I accept, and, and the Christian philosopher pointed this out to him because he was talking about some other person and he said the other person was wrong if they accepted the premises. If they said, look it, an animal has these properties and if I have these properties, then yes, I'm an animal. Right, because you're accepting that contingency of if you're an animal, you have well, you have these properties, you're going to be called an animal. Then fine, yes. Then according to that definition, if I accept that I have these proposition, these properties, I am an animal. Right, but that doesn't mean you have to accept that definition or that category. This is why you have brood animals. And and Arn just wasn't understanding this. He's like, no, it's you're 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 just a fact. You're an animal always. Period. Bar none. There are no exceptions. You know, prima facie. Not how it works. And, and the Christian philosopher was trying to explain it. This and even Anthony Bandabosco in the back. You can see his face is going, "Oh God, stop, Arn." Yeah, yeah I mean, for example, I'll give you the, dumb discussion. Philosophy has never really been Arn's thing. He's he borderlines on sci or borders on scientism on occasion. I think I feel so. Yeah. Seems like it's all arguments about definitions. It's we not, try to not, like we try to not, not to talk, we try not to argue about dumb shit like that. It's just not the semantics. It is the consequences of having the semantics. Who was the Christian philosopher you're talking about, Steve? John. Who was our? Why is our philosophy name? important? Uh, JJ, I don't, I don't think know. Steve heard you. I sit in Discord and talk about it all day long. Precisely. Hey, Steve, you dumbass. Who is uh, Aaron arguing about being an animal? Uh, I'm going to give you his name in a second here. i got to find the video. Oh, all right. Mr. Impatient Pants. I mean, it, it um, does seem to me that Aaron kind of knows what his wheelhouse is a little better than he used to. Steve, do you have any new territories of language that you'd like to dominate? Like, language? What do you mean? Well, like, I think you, you you laid the flag on atheism or atheist. Um, is there another word that you'd like to take? Up? I mean, <laughs> well, just well, there's disbelief and denial. Those have are, you considered you know. uh, agnosticism and what that means? Already, yeah, we've already been over that. Um, Rejection is, you know, what's funny is rejection is actually an interesting word because in rejectionism with Frege and Geech, they, they accept rejection as the affirm, affirmation of the negation, but Russell only accepted it as not acceptance. What is this video? Shit. Yeah, I think the affirmation of negation is, is the right position.
acceptance of F, acceptance of F or F, affirmation of the negation is the most common. Yes. And that's just what you mean by rejection. Yeah, so I reject P. You're saying that you're accepting the negation. Okay, so the, the material facts are, are something along the lines of, look at, you can use words differently. They're probably seeing this, no big deal. But everything I've said is congruent with the literature. The literature. Um, and so there's something where you can actually uh, objectively go validate and say, look at, I'm, I, I, here's what Steve's saying, here's the literature saying, there's uh, a relationship between them, right? Unless you don't understand the material that like, all right, he'll read literature and go, yeah, I'm reading what I want to read into it. it. It doesn't work that way. And that's when you go ask somebody who knows their shit, right? And you say, am I reading this right? You get validation for it. That's what I try to do. I go to other people and I say, hey, look at um, Alex, you know, am I, am I reading this correctly, right? I talk to Alex from Alpass like every other day just about um, this time. For, for as brilliant as he is, you guys don't know how appreciative you should be to have him. Mitz. God love, God love Frigga is my homeboy. Frigga is your homie? Alex doesn't really come around here. He used to. Well, he has his own Discord. Were you guys on my Alex Mall Pass? Well, he was here yet today and yesterday, um, but uh, um, Thomas the Lamas was talking about killing hookers, and he didn't appreciate the discussion. Okay, well, that would, yeah. Anyways, isn't, this guy's name was Tom, John Mark Reynolds. Yeah, put it, put it, do me a favor, watch the first like 10 minutes. You don't have to work, don't, don't want to watch it all, but watch the first 10 minutes. Um, I just put it in the chat there. Um, and tell me what you think of it. And tell me if, if the John Mark Reynolds wasn't making sense. He was explaining the difference between a, a, a material fact of, of, of ontology and, and reality as opposed to a categorical fact that's only stipulated by definitions. Um, the, one of the reasons why this is critical is because Aaron will make the argument reality is real by definition. Man. Right? But the problem with that is, if that's the case, if reality is real, quote, by definition, then why do we have arguments such as, uh, you know, Moore's I have a hand? Or have that argument. If, if, all this, if, if we just accept by fiat that reality is real, why are these arguments like Descartes' demon or Brain of Ad existing? It's because we're talking about Cartesian certainty. We're talking about a situation where you just cannot have epistemic certainty and, or you, you have to deny a, what's called epistemic closure, right? More, more will, will argue that, like for the Brain of Ad, to get, get uh, around that, to say that you have a hand, in reality, is that you deny the epistemic closure principle, and who was it? More, more says you have to sustain it. Really fascinating epistemological questions, and Ara just poo-poo's them like, oh well, you know, fuck the literature kind of thing. You know, screw more, screw Nozax, screw uh, Cart. It's just That's not yeah. really applicable to what animal means. No, but the principle is the same. He's saying reality is real by definition. Therefore, it is a fact that, that reality is real because it's real by definition. So when you say, well, how do you know you're not a brain of the vat? Because his argument is, well, because reality is real by definition. That's that's not a good argument. That is a very bad argument. That sounds Hi, like a Kathleen. Did that you, sounds like Kathleen's really argument. Steve, yeah, did you like, already you know, tell the story about Aaron Ra? Yeah, I did. You missed it. Oh, I missed it. Yeah, you know, you know how Damn. Kathleen says, you know how Kathleen says God just is. Aaron Ross says reality just is. The principle. What's the difference? Well, I mean, somebody goes to say God just is, but I don't know if they say God exists by definition. I don't know how that would work. Does Aaron say that reality is purely actual? No. I don't think he. That's some he Josh Brister shit right there. <laughs> no, Thomas, speak. Um, mm -hmm. Matter of fact, if you ever, if you ever set like R and up with somebody like Pragmatic Culture or um, other jackass, uh, 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 Australis, and Andrew Australis, then he would probably be. Yeah, that's um, who Yuri debated the other night. See? Oh, my my heart goes out. Oh, to you. I thought it was Dan. Oh, I knew yeah. Jack was going to pull some smug. I'm sorry. Picture. I'm like... sorry, Jack. I misspoke. Wait, yeah, Dan... Danny and Vic, right? Oh, fuck. Yeah, was... <laughs> <laughs> and when you say Danny and Vic, you just mean Vic, right? Actually, Wait, in this case, I just mean Danny. When you say Vic, you just mean Mary Jane. 
<laughs> I'm I'm leaving motorsport. But no, anyway, I'm gonna be taking off the So so Michael, um, like like I said, I just I really want your opinion. I mean, am I off base by my argumentation to Aaron? Because I do want to know. No, right? I, think, I just think that Aaron's an idiot, and that's the only reason why I'm I'm capable of making that judgment. Or people much smarter in the room. Well, no, he's a smart you. guy. I mean, Aaron, Aaren's smart for what he does. He's... We, were both, we were both saying before, right before he invited you in here that we think you're right. We don't find the, the debate very interesting on the definition sure. of atheism, but we think that you're right and they're wrong. Like, M Matt Dillahunty and Aaron are wrong. You know they're wrong. I, I, yeah, I agree with that. I, I appreciate that immensely. Trust me. Um, but they, they, they try to gaslight. I, I'm serious. It, it's like I've seen a lot of gaslighting going on. It's like they're making people question like my, me question my own understanding um and it's a little different but it's so like easy it's it's like it uh and i don't know why that is because it's like such a basic uh objection i don't know like why it why you think you need to entertain people like r and m oh well, because r has a following r uh, has a following and people and, and what's funny is people will agree with them but just because they say something Right, I, I, I mean, literally, if Arn says something, that people that don't know this shit are just going to agree with them. What is the debate about? Oh, the, my, my, my argument was this: is that as a spokesperson for American atheist, his what he said to Stephen Hoyt was incongruent with what American atheist says. It was just like yesterday on my my Facebook page that he said this to Stephen Hoyt. These are the yesterday or the day before, so it's not like it's been ages ago. He said Wait. to Stephen Hoyt that disbelief is lack of belief. And he said atheism is the disbelief that God does not exist. Your American atheist on their about page says completely the opposite, that atheism is not the disbelief of God's. There's an inconsistency here because you are a regional spokesperson for American atheist. So which is it? Uh, Steve, what have you... I think a way to corner them is... Uh, to, if you ask this question, do you hold the belief that it's more likely than not that no gods exist? No, he he, 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 he believes, no, 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 hey, wait, no, God, no, God, yeah. no, straight up, Aaron believes there's no gods. He straight up thinks all gods are bullshit. About that. He even, he even said today, quote, to somebody that, that he thinks that I actually believe there are no gods, but I'm too afraid to admit it from motive or something. He's telling me what I believe now. I'm like, what? To admit it? Believe there's no gods? Why would I give a fuck if that was my position? I'm like one of the most controversial people on the internet right now. I don't give a shit, you know, about what other people think. I put forth my own opinions, my own beliefs, right? So if I believe that, I would tell people that. For Aaron to tell people that I believe something that I don't believe, I think a little disingenuous. Because if I was do that to him, he'd be all for my ass. Disingenuous. Yeah, fake gods are bullshit. Steve. Hey, Steve, I have a question. <laughs> um, do you believe uh, that Topeka is the capital of Kentucky? I believe that Topeka, Topeka Kansas is the of, of Kentucky? Yeah. Kansas or Topeka? Uh, well, no, you knew that one. Okay, so uh, let, let's put it, let's put it another way. Uh, at the state capitals are a bad example because you probably memorized all of these. But l let's just pick a fictional place, right? Let's say I ask you, uh, do you believe that um, Sanut is the capital of Tabicha? Um, I would have no idea what either of those places are, so I would just say I don't know. Okay, so does that mean that you disbelieve that the uh, Place is the capital of, of the oh, it state means that I, 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 have, I have an unbelief. I don't disbelieve it because I'm not rejecting it. Right. So you would you would say that you have non-belief, belief or unbelief? Yeah. Do um, you have the way Dr. there's a Bird, distinction between non-belief and disbelief? Right. Disbelief is you actively think it's not the case. Non-belief is you just don't hold the belief. Right. Yeah, non-belief or unbelief would be synonymous in that case. Yeah. In fact, Dr. Burgess Junction points that out distinctly in one of his papers. Belief is the act of just you know believing of the negation, and then unbelief is just that you don't believe either way. You don't you you don't have a belief, right? So if I yeah, I, I, that's why there's a, actually a dictionary of unbelief, right? Um, but if I say you know um, I have an unbelief of the proposition, which sounds weird, but it would be interpreted as I 
just don't have a position on the proposition. I don't assign a truth value to it. You think unbelief is makes more uh, is more correct than non-belief? No, it's no, no. I mean, I, it's not a matter of being more correct or less correct. It's, I think it's harsher on the ears. Okay. Uh, when I looked up unbelief, it came specifically with the lack of religious belief and absence of faith. So maybe when we talk about belief in religious matters, uh, unbelief is a more specific version of non-belief in general. Because, yeah, when I looked up unbelief, it says specifically atheism, non-belief, etc. Yeah, well, again, so, you're looking up descriptive de definitions, right? I mean, so yeah. it's hard to yeah. say. I, I mean, I wouldn't use unbelief as an epistemic status only because this sounds weird to me. Right. right. Where does disbelief fit in? So American this atheist agrees aggression. with you that there's a distinction between disbelief and yeah, unbelief. Matter, yeah, that, that was the funniest part. American atheist uses disbelief and um, no. denial the way I do, right? The way the philosophical literature uses it, but they don't use atheism the way the philosophical uses it, which is another to me inconsistency. To, to like IX when I go on the ACA Discord and stuff like that, I like a system to be consistent. You know, I like there to be internal consistencies, mm -hmm. and I have noticed that the ACA and American atheists have inconsistencies in their system because if they're going to say, "Look, it, we are going to use disbelief and denial," because they're correct on that. But we're going to use atheism as the colloquial. Uh, to me, it's a little bit, um, and especially when they don't put out that there are other <laughs> philosophical definitions of it. American atheist Why literally says there's only one definition that exists. Arn has actually made that argument. That's it. Why not think there's of it no as other... inclusive rather than inconsistent? It seems it, to me, obviously, it's, 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 in, it's just inclusive. It includes both ways because there are people who think no. one way and people who think of it another way oh because it's, in, it's inconsistent Honestly. because they're they're using philosophical terminology for half that sentence and in and in, in, in non-philosophical terminology for the other half of the sentence it's, in, it's to me it's inconsistent in the same sentence i'm not so sure that one's uh, philosophical and one's not see, philosophical I might be wrong, but i think that you and american atheists and Aaron Ra and Matt Bundy, i think you might all be tell me if you agree with if you think this is the case or not I think you might all be operating on an assumption that is not necessarily true, and that assumption is that if you hold the belief that no gods exist, then to be consistent, you have to also be willing to make that philosophical and and clear and have justification. But I think that you can uh, that you can believe that no gods exist, but not uh, even claim that that's rational. Or it's okay. not rational or irrational. You can just have like an intuition that no gods exist. So you don't have justification. It's just an intuition. It's you're, not you're rational. You want it's to, not you want to, but you want to, okay, but what you're doing is doing a planting argument. You want to argue that it's irrational. That's probably basic belief. I'm just saying somebody could take that. Yeah, that's, that's, re, that's reformed epistemology. Wait, what the fuck is going on? Um, I don't what? think that. Why would anyone deny that you could? be an atheist who is like irrational you can't I mean, of course you can't i mean you don't have to justify your beliefs right you can be an irrational agent i in fact funny is i just again had this conversation today um with, with ozzy and 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 i, I had noted to him because he had noticed something to me and i said well this assumes that the person is a rational agent right now do i have to point out in every blog that i point that i write that my arguments are assuming the principle of rationality or reason or that I'm, I'm dealing with a rational agent i mean do i have to like literally explicitly say that every single time no wait i don't know if i don't know about the plantinga thing but look you can be a rational agent and you can have justifications for lots of your beliefs and but you can still hold the belief that no gods exist and just hold it without justification just but that belief that belief would be irrational though if you don't justify no, that belief no, or a rational it could be oh. It could be neither rational or irrational. It could just just irrational. Be irrational. That's what and we there's said. There's nothing wrong with that. And then oh, there's nothing wrong with that. But the, in, the, in the great but, debate, yeah. and so you have to. But in order to do that, I think you still need to have a decent reason why you think it's irrational. Well, what's being it's what's a, being I, offered is not like like a like. W I mean, essentially what's being asked of you is like, what's wrong with, say, pragmatic reasons? I mean, you've called yourself a pragmatist for a long time, Steve. I, I think you're 
sympathetic to pragmatism. I, I, I am, and I understand prag pragmatic reasons. As a matter of fact, I even deny evidentialism because of pragmatism, right? I think that there are reasons why you can have a belief that is not comporting to Clifford's principle because of pragmatic or prudential reasons, okay? So I, I, I agree with you there. But to say something along the lines of, oh, I believe there's a God and not have any kind of justificatory conditions, like Plantinga does, I, I just can't buy that. I can make the argument that a rock is amoral, right? It's not immoral, well, immoral, he's, immoral. Plantinga, Plantinga's not going to argue that there's um, a lack of um, some property that you would want to call justification. He's going to make the distinction between justification and warrant and use an externalist theory. Well, he's the only on one that, that does that, theory, though. Right. He's the only person See, I think makes I agree. a distinction between yeah, warrant I think and justification. That's you know what yeah, you I have agree. An intuition. I like you guys. I, I get. I always. I, I, you guys always give me good conversation. I, I don't get this on, on, on much. Do you know that if you believe something uh, merely because of an intuition, that that you, an intuition isn't justification, but that doesn't make your belief irrational. I, I understand what you're saying. I I, I get you, but the the, the, the the my counter argument would be that would be. There are certain things, like for example, gut instinct, right, or mother's instincts, right. That even though it would not be considered to be rational, there, like you said, there could be pragmatic reasons for thinking it would be the case, right? Especially when safety is involved. Arms way, um, you have intuition they, they might be in arms way, and you act upon it. And, and and there's pragmatic reasons for doing that. But I think that case is maybe your body is picking up s something, some sort of um, sensations or information that your your mind's not directly registering right so when we say we have an intuition for something that's wrong maybe we're picking up clues subconsciously so therefore that is justified pragmatically to to say uh yeah you know i've, I've got instinct let's go with it kind of thing what? but with the whole god thing follow that sorry well wait i don't no, I disagree. Like, if you, you're about to leave your kid with a babysitter and you get a really bad feeling, uh, like, a, uh, and, yeah, you could be picking up on some body language, right? And you might be, I think then, though, you're justified in not leaving your kid, even though you don't you? know of any other than your gut feeling. That, and I don't think that's an intuition, though. If it's because you're picking up on body language, that's a reason. No, 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 but your intuition could be just picking up body language that you're not subconscious, that you're only, uh, you're only processing subconsciously. You're not consciously noticing these, these body language things. This is why we take it as I'm having, I'm having a gut instinct that I can't explain why I think this way or I believe this way or I feel this way. I mean, Helen's a psychology person. So, I mean, Helen, is it possible that their intuition could be based upon subliminal things that our brain's just not uh, consciously being aware of? What? Yeah, what is... well, because it's subconscious, you might not know whether it's an intuition or you're picking Fair up enough. the body language. But I think that if it if you if it is because you're picking up on the body language, then whether you know it or not, it's not merely an intuition. What, what, I, is I, it, I, what exactly is at stake? And I don't understand what's being debated. Um, some did someone imply that that to be an atheist. Um, the belief can't be irrational or something. No, she's she's arguing that she's proffering the argument that um, theism could be um, irrational. That you can hold a belief that God exists without justification. Uh, oh no, it, no, no, no! I'm talking about atheism, not. Okay, theism. Wait, I think. Well, theism. okay, I, okay, atheism. Okay, my bad. Um, well, what's the difference? If you can hold atheism the same way, why can't you? I mean, why would you be able to, well, to hold one on irrationally? If you're a foundationalist, you have to believe that you can hold beliefs without justification. Well, no, I, I totally Haven't believe you that you can hold yourself a foundationalist. No, before? I totally agree that. Because I mean, I know I've mentioned to you before that most of the time but, when foundationalists talk, they don't say that the properly basic beliefs are not justified. They just say they're justified other than by other beliefs. Well, there's but two ways you say that, but you say that you believe that your properly basic beliefs. I, I, don't have justification. No, 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 no. Hang on, you, 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 hang on, hang on. Let me, let me, let me decompact this because I think Kelvin is going to kind of conflating things. You can definitely have beliefs that are unjustified. You can have irrational beliefs that are properly basic. That is the whole point of foundationalism. Well, right? it's not but really, not, but it, but I see. I, I mean, okay, it, but that's th that's the, the gist. Well, of I get the point. Okay. Yes, no, no, I well, agree. That's okay. split, well, that's the split between classical foundationalism and meta justificatory foundation. You're, you're okay, fine. Well, hang on. Fine. Let, me, let, me, let me finish this, and you're going to add on the nuance. It's kind of tangential. Oh, like, like, some, some people can argue. Some people argue that probably basic beliefs are just non-justifiable. Period. Some people say that it's not inferentially justifiable and non-dogmatically 
justifiable. They just cannot be justified. Some people say that they can be justified by other means. That's, I think, what you're talking about between classical and, and, and what was the other one, meta justification? Um, yeah, that's maybe what you're alluding to. Yeah. I'm worried that there's threefold, threefold ambiguity here. No, don't I worry. Finish, don't I worry. Let's the get to because we want to get to a different point. My, my right, so, so, so that there can be beliefs that are properly basic, but I, I think that you can't just shove everything into that, right? Those have to be foundational. Those things have to be something that's ubiquitous between all people. That all people have to say, "Hey, reality exists as a sense of rationality. If not, how do I function?" So that is something that is properly basic. That I assume as a properly basic belief that reality is something that has extension, its existence, right? I exist in some capacity in that reality. Yes, I assume it. It is foundationalism. Um, I was going to say, it, I'm, I'm worried that there are three different that's, senses in which a belief can be irrational. You might think a belief is irrational when it's unjustified. You might think a belief is irrational when one has no reason for holding it. And then you might think that a belief is irrational. And this is what I would think people mean by it when there's some other belief you hold that is logically inconsistent with it. Or fourth one would be, what are the fourth one too? You, you can hold a belief to be irrational if you, if you, if you guess. Well, you're forgetting invalid inference. Heck. Or, well, that, What's well, that? Invalid you're inference. Forgetting inference. invalid inference. Um, Isn't that what you meant? That might fall into that. one of the, the other categories. Anyways, so Helen, does that answer your question? So, because I, I just don't think you can shove atheism or theism into a properly basic belief. Um, because it's not something. No, I think I think that's, 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 that's I don't think I didn't realize that's what you were saying. Yeah, well, that's why I, I was trying to clarify. Before I had eight people interrupt me. I think invalid inference is distinct, right? Because the idea is that somebody could just say that there isn't a problem or any irrationality involved with, um a belief that lacks a justification, right? Because you could just say those are irrational beliefs. But I think nobody would say that a belief which is justified by appeal to an invalid inference, right, is not irrational. And that would be something distinct from a belief that is contrary to evidence or conflicts with other beliefs right it just seems to me that rationality first and foremost has to do with like internal consistency between one's beliefs um but you might have like a broader sense of rationality which involves like responding to reasons but my point is is that in the more restricted sense it's obvious that um a theist might be um uh rational um because their belief that God exists might not be logically inconsistent with anything else they believe. I think um, I think a theist can be rational. I have no issue with that, um, as long as it comports, you know, with their other beliefs, right? If, if you have, if you have, if you're more of a contiritist person, and you think that uh, in your web of beliefs that you have a whole bunch of beliefs, and you have an inconsistency between one belief and another belief that involves theism, then that might be an issue, right? But I don't ever say that theism is not rational. Um, I think there are ways in rational, but if you if you say, look, I believe in God because, um, you know, a, rain, a, a unicorn sprang out of my ass one day and said, hey, God exists, I'm not going to take that as a valid justificatory reason to, to say that you're rational believe that God exists. It's just, you, you have to be able to at least have some reason for why you hold a, that particular position that God exists or does not exist. But you can, I think you can have reasons for holding a belief that's unjustified. Because the reasons might be so weak that they aren't sufficient to justify it. Well, that's what would get into more pragmatism then. Like, um, I take it that a belief striking you as true is a reason to hold it, um, but it might be a very bad reason. So a, a theist might say, here's why I believe God exists. It just strikes me as true. Um, it's not a, that's not a valid I'm sure that truth. person needs to be irrational, um, um, even if they're unjustified. So what you're saying, you're, you're saying it's not so far as irrationality, but it's just it's, it's a very weak justification. Um, or yeah, I would say the belief is unjustified. Yeah, so you would say the belief is unjustified. 
Yeah, I, I, don't, because you know, I think you can have. I would too, actually. I think you can have. You can rationally hold an unjustified belief. Or at least that was Well, if it's unjustified, how is it rational then? Because you have some reason or other to hold it. And it isn't matter, right? I can yeah, say, the, look at. But the I can reason is an epistemic. I think what he's saying is that the reason is an epistemic. And well, no, it might be an epistemic reason. I. It depends yeah, on what this. If, I, if I say if I say I'm gonna flip a coin, heads it's heads God, I believe God exists, tails I'm believe, gonna believe that God doesn't exist, and I I flip it in its heads, and I say hey look, it's heads. It's my I I have a reason now to believe that God exists. Is that a valid justification for it? But I'm not sure that's actually a reason. Some things, look. Um, I don't a reason. It's a very I, bad I, reason. It's a guess. So I, I might I might be an error theorist, for example, not because I think any of the arguments for it are persuasive but because it seems to me that it's on to something that it has to be getting something right and that might be but a reason press, but if i press you on that could you give me the reasons like if i if i say hey you know why do you tend to error theory you there's gonna be something in your in your reasoning by which you can explain to me why you think error theory is a better way to go i mean you i like for example i tend to error theory right and i i, I don't necessarily hold it well, it might but, just, it might simply be it just strikes me as true. Um, I don't know if, I don't know if that makes sense. I don't think error theory is something that could be true or false. It's just a, a way of looking at it and say, look, you know, um, these propositions are all untrue because of an instantiation issue. There's no there's no property like if I, if I say stealing is wrong, there's no property of wrongness that can be instantiated into wrong to make that same sentence ever true. So it's untrue. Um, well, you could say that categorical norms are incoherent. Mm -hmm. But wait, what does this have to do with any error theory? Is a position. You can hold that position, or you can reject that position. But does that make something true or false? I, I, I don't like when. I, I, to me personally, and this is maybe just my own thing, is when you're talking about philosophical positions. I, I don't necessarily think that they're propositional as far as true and false, right? I mean, if I say scientific realism or scientific anti-realism, it doesn't really make sense to think that either one of them is true or false. It's just Why? how we look at something. Why is that? Yeah, because I'm, I'm. For example, if I say that as I'm a scientific instrumentalist, right? And, and so, to me, a scientific theory only has to be able to explain things and to make consistent, accurate predictions, right? I don't care if that model is the way it actually is. I don't care if it's an ontological reality. But it's saying that the, the the scientific instrumentalism is true or not is not really a proposition. It is a perspective on. On how we view scientific modeling, right? Is, what what would it mean for scientific instrumentalism to be true? Can, what does it even can, mean? I can construct a sentence in English from meaningful words combined in grammatical ways. Um, does mean that, it has any that, substance that to it? I can then label. I can then label that sentence scientific instrumentalism. Um, so prima facie, that sentence expresses a proposition. If anything expresses a proposition, what what is the proposition is, is expressing? If, if if scientific instrumentalism is true, what would that mean? Um, so I would write out the sentence, for example, that science isn't in the business of telling us about the world; it's just in the business of making predictions. Well, but that's, that's a description. Of, that's a description of the proposition. Well, I don't, I don't. It's just a sentence, and if it's true. Sorry, it's a sentence, and it expresses a proposition, which may or may not be true. Um, I don't think the sentence itself describes a proposition. So if, if okay, so if a scientific theory merely describes reality um, to the point where it it's good enough, I mean, it, it makes predictions and explains. If I say that scientific instrumentalism is true, that it is true that scientific theories predict and explain on to that well i take it the scientific um, instrumentalist either takes no stand on or denies whether what science is telling you um is actually telling you something about the world about how the world is um and they might be wrong about that because it might be that science really is telling you about how the world is yeah but i, I don't maybe I, maybe it's just me i don't i don't read it in, in that way but um, again, I'm willing to, to to admit it. That might just be my own personal view on that, right? Um, I appreciate that. 
anyway, I don't know how we got onto that because that point I was just making is is yeah. is, is that it. there can be a belief that you're not irrational in holding because you have some reason for holding it, but the reason isn't strong enough to justify it. And it might even be an epistemic reason. Uh, I take it that for a belief to be justified is for you to have um, epistemic reasons that are maybe decisive or that all things considered favor the belief. Um, But you can have some reason to believe something even though that's not the case. Just like you might have it, look, I might have some reason to burn my house down, um, but it might be unjustified for me to do that. Uh, yeah, well, you can have some reason. It doesn't make it like good enough to warrant you having the belief. Every kind of right, but I think that. there's a difference between being unjustified and being irrational. I know I agree with that. Right. Well, I mean, just because I, just because it's unjustified doesn't necessarily mean by entailment it's irrational. Right. The only thing I would say that that you can't I, I don't know how you get a rational belief if it's unjustified. Belief like properly basic belief would be irrational and unjustified. Right? I don't I don't say that properly beliefs beliefs are rational. All right. I was just responding to the whole godless thing because I thought okay. someone, I'm not sure if it was you or who, was denying that um that uh atheism couldn't be like um a uh what I can't remember how we got into this topic, but something like there was a question about whether one could be an atheist um, who is unjustified but not irrational. And that's what that's what Godless was saying. Yeah, and I think I agree with her. No, I mean, well, I, I mean, I, a merely verbal issue, just about what we mean by irrational. I mean, if you just mean unjustified, then obviously they would be irrational. Interesting. Did you ever, did you, Dr. Z, did you ever, you ever um, see my uh, argument that using lax definitions, you can actually be an atheist and a theist at the same time? Um, no. That's that's the argument that got me kicked out of AR. But I mean, you can you can stipulate that you're going to use words however you want. So you can stipulate that um, theist means blah blah blah, and atheist means so and so. Oh well, yeah, of course. course. But I mean, I, I mean, I'm just going by what like the American Atheist or the ACA would use in their definitions. Using their definitions, um, you can extrapolate and make the argument that um, that uh, atheist can also be a theist. And how wait, how does that go? That's pretty funny. Yeah, well, the way it would work would be this. Um, they 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 obviously argue that uh, atheism is merely a lack of belief. So therefore, weak atheism, which People get confused by weak atheism. Weak atheism is not a matter of conviction. Weak atheism is just as I do not believe, right? So, a weak atheist, they're calling somebody who doesn't believe a weak atheist who has, I do not believe with respect to the proposition. They're calling that atheist. Would you agree? Um, I guess I'm inclined to say that someone is an atheist um, if and only if either they lack the belief that God exists or they disbelieve that God exists. And, and, and that's fine. I'm I, not, I, don't disagree, that. I, I, don't, I don't disagree with that. But, but, but I don't think that, there's anything wrong with the lack, the lack of belief. It leads to, it leads to contradictions and, and, and absurdities. But as far as what you just said, I'm not disagreeing with. But that wasn't my question. My question was, is that, that they, this is their position. Is that correct or that this is, this is their position? Um, say it one more time because it's probably incorrect. Um, their, the Ameri- the ACA and atheist experience, their position is atheism is merely the lack of belief. That's the, so they're the, the weak atheist. They're using that position. I do not believe P as the term atheist. That's yeah, right. That, that logically entails that, um, it's not the case that Bertrand Russell was an atheist. Yeah, but you're reading too much into this. Just, just listen to what I'm telling you. Well, I think what reading. he's saying is, what he's saying is that, like, um, he's just assuming their definition here. Yes, no, 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 I know. I'm just saying that that's a problem. I agree. Do you, do you, well, of course, it's it problem is a problem. It. He's just but that's like, not the argument. Grant it, yeah, if, if you yeah, grant yeah. Um, their use of the term, yes, um, it presents a problem. Is what Steve is saying. Yes, I'm trying to show you that problem. So, do you, let me go through my premises. Premise one. Um, 
you uh, atheism is the is the not believing of proposition so weak weak atheism which is also the, the proposition you know the proposition not believing the proposition they're going to call that atheist do, do you accept that so I mean, at this point I'm supposed to pretend that i accept it to see where it goes no i don't why would yeah. you disagree with that if you disagree with that tell me what you think their position well, is. that's just their use of it oh yeah. wait of weak atheist they say yeah, lack of belief. I lack a belief. That's what yeah, they, say. they say. That is, they say that is both necessary and sufficient condition to be atheist, which I disagree For with. For being a weak right. atheist. For being a weak atheist is sufficient. Yeah, that's what they mean when they say I'm a weak atheist. I, I'm a weak atheist. I lack a belief. Right. That's what. And they're gonna, but they're going to shorten that and call that atheist, correct? They're going to what? They're gonna shorten that and just call that atheist, yeah. right? Okay, okay. 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 Yeah, but okay, they so, don't mean by that that if you absolutely disbelieve, you don't count. It's not the argument, Helen. Nobody's ever. Nobody's, that's that's irrelevant. Nobody's nobody's saying that. that be okay, silly. well that's yeah. good. All right. Slow, slow slow down, people. You guys you guys go from like you you just love to like <laughs> go from A B to Z. All right. It's all way right. more fun that way. Pro promise yes, one. one. Promise right, one. If you lack the if you lack belief in God, then you're an atheist. Okay, so weak atheism is atheism, according to premise one. Okay. Okay, so premise two. If you accept premise one, theists can say, well, I'm going to define theism as the position that God does not exist, and if I don't accept that proposition, I'm a weak theist, which I'm going to shorten to theist. Wait, say that again? If you allow for the first premise, then to avoid any kind of special pleading, a theist can say, well, is the proposition of God exists, uh, or God does not exist, and if you don't accept that proposition, you are a weak theist. Proposition wow. God exists, you are a weak atheist. This is called mirroring. All right. So if you don't accept, if I say, do you accept the proposition God does not exist? And you say no, and I say, okay, you're a theist. Because it's the same thing as an as, as, as a proposition saying that God exists. Do you accept the proposition that God exists? No. Okay, you're an atheist. There's no difference there. That is exactly the same thing mirroring. If the pro, if the if the first proposition is weak atheism is is atheism, and the second proposition is weak theism is is theism, therefore you can have somebody who doesn't accept the proposition either way, who is agnostic. I've got an answer. I've got an answer. Both weak theist. In which case, under those definitions, you would be both an atheist and a theist. Well, which is not so, a contradiction. I, what I want to say real quick is that the, when someone says they're an atheist and then they qualify, well, what I mean by that is I'm a weak atheist. That's usually when someone starts asking them more questions, right? So they don't ever say, um, what I mean by weak atheist is atheist. They're just using weak to qualify the kind of atheist they are, namely that they mean that they identify as someone who lacks a belief in in God or gods. That's mm -hmm. the way they use the qualifier weak. I'm not I'm not sure the um the argument is I mean there's a way of construing it where it's just kind of trivial because it's just pointing out that you can stipulate words however you would like to use them. Well, I agree it's a, this is a stipulative argument based upon their my argument is that if you're going to use lax definitions like they use it leads to these kinds of things but i just think like my argument should, i think what they should say in response is is that um um the term atheist is uh defined with respect yeah. to theist no, no, wait. Um, yes. well, that's only because but again that's only because we accept that to be so right i mean that's the convention right that atheism is termed in terms of is framed in terms of theism so that's by convention right but they're just going to say look we're trying to capture like um you know the ordinary sense of the term and the ordinary sense of the term um involves uh one's attitude or lack of attitude toward a certain proposition that other people, the theists, believe. Why so, can't you have the proposition of atheism then? Why can't you frame it in the proposition of atheism? Because I mean, you you can stipulate, you you can introduce a word into the English language, um, weak theist, and then define it in that way. That's fine. 
but they're going to say that's a gerrymandered notion that doesn't actually fit any common sense. I disagree. Anyone I, I think it, I think it, it follows by extensionality um, or extension by uh, the fact that if you accept a premise. If you accept the idea that if you have a proposition and you don't accept that proposition, you're going to call that weak. And by mirroring, by negation of that proposition for not P, but but by not P, then it is perfectly reasonable to have a weak position with respect to the negation, which should be weak theism. It just follows out of by extension. Um. What would you call that position then? If well, I say like, the proposition of God does not exist, the argument is like suppose I say um, I'm apolitical, and then someone asks me, well, "What does that mean?" I say, "Well, we can distinguish two different senses of being apolitical. Um, there's a weak sense, which is that with respect to any political position, you have no belief about it one way or the other." Um, and then you could also use it like in the strong sense, which is, which is something like with respect to a class of political positions, um, you think that they're all false. Um, and then someone comes along and says, oh, but now I can introduce the notion of weak political, which is, um, you know, take the negations of any of the political positions and you don't believe those negations. Now someone can be both, uh, apolitical and political. And the response to that is something like, well, look, that just doesn't correspond to the notion of apolitical that we're, that we're interested in. You can stipulate new words to mean whatever you want. Um, that's fine. Given the stipulation, it'll be true. Um, but that's not what I was trying to do. I wasn't trying to just stipulate a meaning for a word. I was trying to capture something that we, that we, had a prior grasp. Of. I mean, you're, but you're, but you're arguing more. Um, uh, you're arguing more positions of how how we, like you said, capture things in common um, discourse and in general parlance. But that's not really what my argument is entailing. My my argument is simply saying that if you allow a definition such that I'm going to frame things in the negative, I'm going to say I'm going to define this in the negative. Um, if you don't accept the proposition, you're this then the theist can do the exact same thing, or I do think you're guilty of special pleading. Well, no, because the theist can't do it, because, not. because what the atheist would be doing is trying to capture a prior notion mm -hmm. that people have. But if the theist did it, they wouldn't be capturing a prior notion. They would be it's irrelevant. That's irrelevant. I think, I think you're reading too much into the how we, we want to have a, a, a dialectic rather than accept the logical understanding of the premise. Then you have to say that that you have to be able to mirror that. I, I, I just don't see any way around the logic of that. It's not a semantic argument at that point. It is if you say the proposition God exists is you don't affirm it and you're just going to say that's weak atheism and I'm going to call it atheism, there's no reason why the theist can't do the same thing with the negation of the proposition. I don't know what you mean. What do you think? What is, okay, what is it? Look, 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 hang on. The following, just, look at. the following is the case. Um, hands if the, the, just wanted to introduce a word into the language and define it in such and such way, they can do so. Um, given the stipulation, you know, it'll be true. Um, but what they can't do is introduce a definition that'll capture a prior notion when that prior notion doesn't actually exist. It it it, it does. Let me show you why. Look at agnosticism. Logically, is is not BP and not B, not P. Would you agree? Uh, I would say it's that's like, uh, an attitude that's distinct from both belief and disbelief. It's like suspension of judgment. You no, know, uh, yeah, that's exactly what it, this is, right? But logically, it is not BP, right? I don't believe P, and I don't believe not P. So it's not BP and not B, not P, right? Okay. Not BP is what's considered to be weak atheism, right? P, by mirroring, would be considered to be weak theism. As Dr. Oppie even said, you know, atheism is no more closer to theism than it is to atheism. Dr. Malik actually pretty much said the exact same thing. Uh, so, so agnosticism, case where you're both a weak atheist and a weak, both a weak theist, right? Because that's what these logical things would would entail. And if you want to call weak atheism atheism, then the theist can call weak atheism theism.
Anyways, I'll, I'll, I'll send you the actual argument. You want to see the actual logical argument? Uh, sure. I have it written down. Um, and why do that? I have, I, have, I have a couple of other arguments I can write by here. If you just, do, how do you call weak atheism theism? How? how? No, no, no. Weak theism, you call theism. Oh, sorry. I didn't misunderstand. Another argument. Did you guys watch my debate with uh, the guy named the Duke? But weak atheists aren't really saying that's all there is to atheism. They're they're qualifying even more what they mean when they give and when they explain themselves. No, they really don't, Helen. The qualifi the qualifier weak is a self identification kind of thing. They don't go therefore therefore. No, like, I, I, like I, I, I I'm telling you, Helen. I've talked to enough atheists, and, and Ix isn't here. He's he's a he's a, a here's, here's for a, look at look at when a person when a person says they're a weak atheist. How's it going? When a person says they're weak atheists, Upset. what they're saying is they're accepting lack of belief as both sufficiency and necessity. A necessary and sufficient condition for atheism. That's what that term seems to imply to, to people. That's what they mean it by. Here's what I was trying to get at. Suppose, for example, we have a, a group of people. Um, call them the Bigfooters. And the Bigfooters... Oh God, I hate Bigfoot arguments. Please don't do this. I, I can't take it. I really can't. If you say a big for this, I'm going to shit myself. I, I, can't, I, can't, I can't take it. Well, I can't I think can't. of a better example, so you're going to have to. I, just, I can't. I can't do that. Yeah, well, yeah. I'm going to go on with it anyway. So the, the Bigfooters, you know, they believe that Bigfoot exists. They have, you know, Bigfoot communities. They, uh, you know, spend all their time talking about it, whatever. And then, you know, there, there's another group of people who decide, you know, this Bigfooter stuff is nonsense, and we want to oppose it. And it would be helpful to be able to categorize, you know, people who aren't Bigfooters. Um, well, one way of doing it is to say that, you know, people who deny that Bigfoot exists, people who disbelieve that Bigfoot exists, you know, those are Bigfooters. Um, but then what do we say about all of the people who have never really thought about Bigfoot before? Um, don't really have a belief one way or the other, but it's very likely that if they were to think about it, they would probably, you know, disbelieve that Bigfoot exists. Do we want to say that those people are neither Bigfooters nor um, the ah Bigfooters? Let's call them. Anyway, yeah, first no. of all, first of all, this this reason why this argument drives me nuts. The a Greek, the a the a primitive, right? A privative. The a privative is basically saying in this particular case. Not as a negation, right? So the A in atheism, out. It doesn't. It doesn't. Doesn't make the word without gods. What it stands for is not meaning the negation of the proposition. So atheism actually is in the negation of the proposition of theism. Theism is the proposition God exists. The negation of that is the, is the proposition God does not exist. That's right. what A in atheist means. Then, so an A bigfoot would be somebody who denies God. You just call it nice bigfoot. Call it, um, I don't know, like opposition Bigfooter or something. Um, and yeah, so suppose they, you know, they're trying to capture this category of people. Um, they introduce a term for it and they distinguish the weak sense and the strong sense. And then someone else comes along and says, well, look, if you can do that, then the Bigfooters can introduce, you know, a weak sense of Bigfooter, according yeah, to I which everyone else is a yeah, Bigfooter. I don't have a problem with that. That's mirroring, yeah. Yeah, and I think the response to that is, sure, you can do that if you want to, um, but then you're not going to be capturing this pre-theoretical notion. You're just going to be introducing a new one. Um, so there's something that we are doing that you can't do. Mm, I disagree. Here's the thing. The, 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 when, when atheists just say atheism is a lack of belief, they're trying to assume agnostics. So the atheists can do the exact same thing. They're going to try to assume agnostics to their side. Atheists be the only people allowed to assume the middle group, right? And by the way, I don't think either group should assume it, right? This is a, uh, you know, a, 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 I'm only submitting this arguendo, right? So, if 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 no, atheists no, wanted no, to assume, no, no. if atheists want to assume agnosticism, well, look at it. If you if you only lack a belief that there is a isn't a god, I'm going to call you a theist. What's the difference? A huge difference. There's no difference. Think about this. L legit, no difference. 
atheism is normally in philosophy the belief that God does not exist, right? And if you're going to take that and you're going to change it to not believing God exists, then the theist can do the same thing. If theism is normally the belief that God exists, he's going to change it to not believing that God does not exist. That is the exact same freaking thing. Malpass himself has this on use of reason, the same type of mirroring. He's made a very similar argument for this. It did occur to me that there, that there might be distinctions that we want to draw. Um, so we might want to distinguish um, individuals who um, don't have a belief one way or the other because um, Gnostic? Maybe, maybe they can't grasp the pros proposition or the, or the proposition. That would be in a sense. No, but if you, uh, like Dr. Graham Oppie in, in Atheism and Gnosticism, he argues a word called uh, ign uh, um, innocent. If you have never been exposed to the proposition or incapable of, of you know, of conceptualizing, like, like you know, invalid or just, you know, intellectually impaired, I guess. Uh, but somebody who's never been exposed to the proposition to evaluate it, he calls it innocent is the terminology he used. Uh, Malik has a different word. He calls it um, uninitiated. You said yeah. that a stone can be amoral, but you don't have a problem with that use of A, but you would insist that we would not be able to use the term A for mm. other contexts? Well, well, no. no. Because you can use things in context, but in the context of atheism, as per Stanford Encyclopedia by Dr. Paul Draper, he points out very specifically, A, in this case, is not to be thought of as without, is to be thought of not. And the reason why there's a difference here is because if you go live, read the literature and you see the word atheist, right, that every single time in every paper I've found, it uses it in the strong sense. It's referring well, yeah. to the negation of the proposition of theism. But they might that's be what, stipulating that that's how they're going to use it for that purpose, just like you might stipulate. But I want to explain the material. difference. I want to explain the IS the difference because this is critical. A rock being amoral, which can mean one specific way of use of the uh, the A prefix, is irrelevant to how it's used in the literature as far as atheism. Correlation with the other. Is this just is this just a method to try and convince people that say they have a, a lack of belief in God that they really don't because they're using the wrong term? Is that well, what there's no right or wrong term on that, um, and no, it's not. However, if you were asking about my personal experience, the vast majority of time where I talk to a lack theist, eventually they're going to say something that leads them actually do have a belief that God does not exist, or at least an irrational state where they will say something like, all gods are bullshit, but I merely lack a belief. That's irrational. So I, I want to go back to the other thing, because it seems to me that there might be distinctions worth drawing. So you might have the innocence or the uninitiated. Um, and let, let's just call them that, you know, the innocence. Mm -hmm. um, then you also have, you know, the people that are initiated and who believe that God exists. Mm -hmm. um, and then you have the people that are initiated who um, believe that God doesn't exist. Then you have furthermore people who are initiated and neither believe nor disbelieve that God exists. They, you know, suspend judgment. Mm -hmm. But then you might have a further category within the people who suspend judgment. Um, within that category, you might have those that like still go to church on Sunday and um you know still read the bible and pray pray and all that stuff and then the ones who uh true you know, christians have orgy parties um yeah, and sure. they might say oh you can be an agnostic atheist or an agnostic theist where, where, where what that means is is that you're initiated you have no belief one way or the other but you still act okay. In ways characteristic. Have you read my blogs on? Uh, have you read my blogs on on, on agnostic atheism? Uh, no. Um, there's so much ambiguity with with the terms like that. One, I mean, have you ever seen the terms used in the literature? Um, which terms? Uh, terms like theological, like um, agnostic atheist or or the you know um, agnostic theist. You don't see them used that much. Matter of fact, you barely see them used them all. There's only a handful of places, and I pretty much know all of them. The only place that one place is mentioned where he mentions the, uh, theistic Gnosticism is Dr. Paul Draper. Um, that is in a um, saying that I merely don't believe just God exists, but I also know God does not exist, right? It's a modification, it's a modification, uh, epistemic modification of the Gnosticic belief, which is okay, whatever. I don't particularly like that method. I believe in a single. Um, 
a single axial method like Dr. Malpass uses on, on use, of, use of reason. I don't like the multi-axial approach. I think it's flawed from the get-go. Dillahunty actually agrees that, Amer that agnostic atheism in the weak case, in other words, atheism used in the weak sense, is nonsensical. Um, and he, he got that from a lot of deliberations for people that we have talked to. Um, but to slam ontology and epistemology together like that, it serves no purpose but to provide ambiguity. I have a, I have a blog post called The Logical Ambiguity of, of Agnostic Atheism, and I've given at least a dozen different possible variations of meaning of what that term can actually be inferred with, with six logical possibilities as hell it has really no defined meaning in philosophy even if you go to look at the wikipedia it even says this needs verification this needs certification uh, um, citation it's a mess uh, you don't go and find terms like agnostic atheism in the literature at all it's barely in existence um the only other place i even think i remember seeing it was with robert flint he mentioned it in a book called agnosticism in 1903 other than that pff, the, the it's Literally only found on the only time I ever hear the term agnostic atheist is by internet atheists who love atheist experience because that Dale Hunty five years ago used to promote that term. Now he says it's nonsensical. He has changed his position on this, even though I've been arguing for the longest time that it's been nonsensical. <laughs> and and I asked, do, do, do you agree on that? Seen that I mean, Dale to, position on that? to be honest, this um, kind of reminds me of Darth Dawkins trying to convince people that agnosticism yes. doesn't exist. Yes. I didn't hear a word of any of that. What? I, I, I understand the case you're making about what these terms mean philosophically, but I think this reminds me a lot of like Darth Dawkins telling people there's no such thing as agnosticism. Oh, but no, but he's, an idiot. he's an idiot. <laughs> We're, oh, I, we're, I, I listened to Darth talk about that. He didn't know what the fuck all he was talking about. That's encouraging. That's very I true. See, I, I understand what, what agnostic atheism means. It's something do, similar to weak you? atheism. And I think you understand what people mean by it. But what you're asking is... No, 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 no. no. Don't, don't say that. I, I don't. Standards. I have talked to numerous people, and I can get I can have six atheists in the room. I get six different definitions of agnostic atheist. Oh come on, that's that's you totally know you know the whole spiel. Look, really? this is what they you, say. You really yeah, they that? say okay, so, gnosis means knowledge. Um, I've um, agnostic means um, I okay, so don't have this. knowledge. So I'm an atheist. I don't believe, but I admit I don't know. So, that's so one I'm an way agnostic that's not, atheist. That's, that's, not, that's what they say. No, no, it's not, that's not all what they say, Helena. Not at all. I have people say, well, agnostic atheism means that um, I, I'm not saying that I believe there's a God, and I'm saying that the knowledge of God is unknowable. Way of looking at that. That's because there's two ways to be in the See, I guess, I guess my, my yeah. attitude George, hang, hang, hang on, hang on. I want to finish this. Hang on, please. Helena, I, 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 we always seem to go on different topics. Helena, there's three different ways of looking at agnosticism, okay? There's as an epistemic normative principle, there's as epistemological proposition, or psychological state. When you have agnosticism as, as an epistemic modifier, it's very confusing because it can mean either the epistemological proposition, which, by the way, do you, are you upholding that, that it means that I have no knowledge? If you say I'm agnostic with an epistemological proposition, that does not tell you if you're hard agnostic or soft agnostic. It doesn't tell you whether you accept the knowability of gods or the gods are unknowable. So it's very confusing. So if I say agnostic atheist, does that tell you that I accept as an epistemological proposition that gods are knowable or that gods are unknowable? You can't know. It's ambiguous. That atheism is an expression very, of someone's right. toxic position, right? I've had a lot of these discussions with atheists, so I, I I know damn well that they they would give me twelve different answers of what they think these these terms mean when there's no real meaning to them in philosophy. Go look. You go go find me. Uh, uh, this is what these terms are defined as. You don't see it in the literature. I, I'm perfectly fine with an argument that one term is more ambiguous than another, or has more ways in which it runs afoul of not being philosophically rigorous or whatever, and that's fine. Sure. But what people okay. are doing when they're using these terms, I agree, is not in the literature. They're speaking colloquially about their doxastic position and about you know their degree of certainty. It, it, uh, it, maybe it, maybe I, 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 I think my, be retired. I think my, 
but it's still perfectly understandable to most I people. I want to understand ultimately it is. what it's this guy's arguing against. I disagree. It's really not. I think it's ambiguous, and, and I have to really narrow down what they mean by that term. Because I, I, here, I, I just posted there. I, I'll, it'll show you all the different ways these things can be interpreted, and how many, pe how many but, people have but said that's it. True. That's true. That's true of like most of even philosophical terms that are used in literature. For example, um, term. you know, you could get five different philosophers in a room and they'll all tell you that reduction means something completely different. Um, yeah. But people still use the term reduction. I, and I, get um, and I think it's fine so long as when they use it, they say, hey, here's what I mean by that. I, I get the concept that words are probably similar. So, but I don't find it to be reasonable to have ontology and epistemology mixed that way to the point it just and in the same and in one case, again, if you're gonna use a multi-axial approach, it is epistemically nonsensical to say agnostic atheist if you're using atheist in the lack of belief condition. A, a non dosaska position because knowledge is a subset of belief. Okay, so what is the what's the solution so that you don't so that we don't have this semantic war over these use of these well, words? That's, a, that's, what do you that, propose that's not a semantic solution? thing. That's actually a set theory thing, right? I mean, if you if, if you have to have a dosastic position before you can epistemically modify it, you have to say I believe before you can say I know, correct? Because knowledge is a subset of belief. Would you agree on that? Yes. If if, if you say agnostic atheism is in the case of a hard position, right? That I'm an atheist that believes that God does not exist, but I'm not claiming it as knowledge. That makes sense, but it's superfluous. How? Because an atheist is saying, I believe God exists, but no, I'm not assuming not. it as knowledge. An atheist is saying, I don't Perfectly. know. No, 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 no. <laughs> this is what drives me nuts when I have these discussions. I literally just got some saying that it only makes sense in the strong case, right? So if you say, I believe if you hold if you hold if you hold atheism to the position if the God does not exist, then it is superfluous because an atheist will say in that case, in the case here, listen to me carefully, in that case, I believe God does not exist. It as knowledge, right? Because if I just say I'm atheist in that case, there's no knowledge condition to be had, right? There's no there's no claim to knowledge there. So by me tacking on, I believe God does not exist, and I'm not asserting it as knowledge, which would be an agnostic atheist, it's superfluous. It adds nothing yes, to Yes, that's the, true, the but the people don't see it that way. That's why that, that term was sort of redesigned as a qualifier like that. What is the, what is the modifying? What is the qualifying? You just agree that they're qualifying the, this assumption that atheists are often faced with when they say they're atheists. That, you know, um, oh, you think you know everything, you can't prove it, all this stuff. So that that's, that's common, that's especially, but that is, it, that is why it developed, because, it you know, before the, purpose, before though. the internet, before the YouTube explosion of the atheists and things like that, if you whispered you were an atheist and you pretty much had to whisper it, you know, you were but expected to be claiming. Uh, it's, it's not from consequent. I'm giving you the historical background why it, it makes sense that that why it makes sense that that qualifier is like the still there. I don't like the why people use it. The ramifications of the title of atheist. That's an argument from consequence. That is that is not a justification to have a superfluous term, in my opinion. And you agree it's superfluous. You even said it's superfluous. So so let's let's move from I, I there. Think, I think all this is showing really is it that really, when we have really. these debates is that we should just clarify our terminology. But pretty much everyone can agree to that. But I don't think it shows that we should throw it out. Like, I think well, that the term reduction, for example, is infuriating in a lot of contexts because it could mean property identity. It could mean higher order identity. It could mean real definition. It could mean law-like relationship. It could mean supervenience, blah, blah, blah. Um, so when people just use it and don't say what they mean by it, it's infuriating. But I, don't, I think it's fine to just use it because there's a tradition of using it. So long as you say, look, here's what I mean by this. Okay, well, again, let me let me finish here because you you had asked me. I said in the one case it's superfluous. The other case it's nonsensical. Do you want to use terms that are nonsensical? You, you can define what you mean by it, sure. But but, but you cannot, it is it's not. Like, well, it's not, it's not nonsensical once you've stipulated it to have a sensible meaning. <laughs> no, it, what problem do you have the shorthand to bypass it? Everybody has to, to give carefully. a paragraph to establish their position. 
define atheism as a lack of belief, you've already agreed that knowledge is a subset of belief. How do you epistemically modify a non dostastic position? It is nonsensical by set theory and epistemic reasoning. It is absolutely nonsensical to say, I am going to qualify with a modifier dealing with, quote, knowledge, a position that's not even a belief position. How do you do that if you don't have a belief position first? You can say, you can understand it quantificationally to say that um, you're, you are uh, an agnostic, weak atheist is to say that there is no belief such that you hold it and that belief is true and you're justified in believing it. Or there is no belief such uh, that you know that, that it's true. That is the most ad hoc thing I've ever heard. So, so but you, so just for clarification, you disagree with Matt Dillahunty on this then, right? What's, what's that? Matt Dillahunty agrees it's nonsensical. You disagree with him? Um, I don't know what you mean by nonsensical. You just literally got done explaining it. Knowledge is a subset of belief. So, dude, I, think what, what can... you, I want to know what this guy requires people to label themselves as so they can avoid this kind of... I make of... No, no argument of what they require to label themselves as. They can label themselves as anything they want. No, they can't, obviously, because you have a problem with any way they try to nuance that to just any kind of nuance they use to describe their position. Do you, do you require people to have a paragraph every time to describe that's, to exactly that, what it that's is? That's what the problem is. Because you're using these terms knology, like, like atheist, uh, agnostic atheist, it's, it requires a paragraph it's to nuance. explain what Man, it's it, not no, black it, and white. It's it is not. It is not nuance. It is actually ambiguous. There's a no, difference between nuance and ambiguous. Absolutely is. But people can label themselves. Here's the argument: people can label themselves everything they want, but they have to accept the ramifications of doing so. For example, the whole lack of belief of atheism. There's baggage to go along with that. There's category errors. There's there's, there's oh, absurdities. Whoa, 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 whoa! Back up, back up. Okay, so what do you mean? There's category We're errors. We're talking about belief. Think. My name is Andrewcus. Okay, for example, category error. Uh, do you know what a theological cognitive this is? Uh, not really, no. A theological cognitive is somebody who doesn't hold that God talk is meaningful, therefore all propositions dealing with gods are not actually propositions. So the whole proposition of God exists is not even a proposition. It's just meaningless nonsense. That would mean that, would mean that you don't believe he exists. That would be a hard position. No, let, let, don't jump ahead, okay? I'm, I'm explaining <laughs> well, this to you. How can I not jump? But see, that's the diff, that's the meaning of nuance. When I mean, you have nuanced you, words, no. you can you can infer those kind of things. Jesus fucking Christ! This is what drives me nuts. I have to give you the argument before you can actually try to refute it. If you don't know the argument. You 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 you, you you're, all you're doing is refuting a straw man. So listen to me carefully. P starting from the beginning, do you agree? this is a person who thinks that all God talk is meaningless. Therefore, the proposition is meaningless. Do you accept that as a? Stipulative definition for workability right now. Somebody could have that position, sure. A non-cognitivist position. Do you agree on that? Do I agree yeah. that that's what that means? I mean, I don't understand what you're asking me to agree to. And do, you, do, you, do you know what a non-cognitivist is? You just In explained any... it. To, you explained to me what the term means, and I'll agree. With you. Question again, because I cut out. Okay, a non-cognitivist would be somebody who doesn't think a proposition like a moral non-cognitivist would be something like an emotivist or a prescriptionist, right? Those are people that think that that the moral facts, those moral propositions are not actual moral propositions. They don't express a moral proposition. They express more of an attitude or something like uh, boost stealing, like booyah theory would be stealing is bad, right? Or, or, uh, don't steal would be something like prescriptionism, right? Stealing is wrong. That it that is not an actual proposition. It's merely just expressing a belief or an, actually an attitude of don't steal, okay. or stealing is bad. Okay. Those are called non-cognitivist positions. A cognitivist position would be something like moral objectivism or moral subjectivism. They're saying that yes, moral propositions exist. They can be true or false. They're truth apt. Okay. So a more a theological non-cognitivist does not think those propositions are truth apt. They're non-propositional cognitivist position okay good so far okay atheism find it whether you do it in the weak or strong case is a propositional position it is either you do not believe the proposition or you believe the proposition is false uh, okay see that's where i have a problem with this whole uh, issue you have with the terminology because the, the the state of the truth of a thing is a binary, but the knowledge of that state is not. So it has nothing to do with what I just said. 
Yeah, it sure does because you're saying that because when you make a knowledge statement about no. something that it has to it be has nothing believe to do it with or do or you, no, you're saying you either have to believe it or don't believe it. You and have that's not that's missing the third one. That's missing nothing the third to do with what I'm talking about. This is that is a that is a irrelevant. All right, argument here. getting a little so uh, take turns talking. And okay, I'm sorry. Interrupt yes, that's, you, that's, you, that you, is you, true. You either do believe something or you do not believe. Something right, that's a dichotomy. But that's 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 so what? That's a dichotomy. That has nothing to do with anything. It's completely irrelevant. Position, and that's pointing, where this all breaks this down. Not true, okay. but that's obvious. now you're jumping to something else. There's a third position, but not on that. The the the, the, okay, the third position is not between I believe and I don't believe. It's between belief and disbelief. There's a difference. I don't know. That's the third position. Between I. But that is the position between belief and disbelief. Yeah, and it's an I don't know. You can't make a decision either way. That's, that's what. That's, that's where that, this breakdown but, happens. But let me let me give you the actual argument. Okay. If you have a theological non cognitivist, which is a cognitivist position, atheism or is it, me, is a non cognitivist position. Atheism is a cognitivist position. They both lack a belief, but you cannot stick a non cognitivist position in a cognitive set. You have a contradiction. Hold on, let me let me chew on that for a minute. Are you saying that if you say that you don't believe, or if you believe that God does not exist, or you don't believe that God exists, or you accept that God exists, all of those positions, uh, the the phrase "God exists" uh, is co conveying some meaningful statement. So, uh, yeah, not yeah. Exists, atheism both have content. You understand. And you understand enough that you can deny or affirm. Hmm. Sort of, yeah. You, I mean, a, yeah, kind of. Atheism at least acknowledges that there's a proposition that be evaluated, right? Whether it whether it evaluates it as false or just doesn't evaluate it, it still recognizes there's a proposition there. A theological so, cognitive does not. Right. The whole you, position is there is no. Well, but you recognize that's a category error. There's yeah. A, well, a I want to ask you category. a question to see how you would answer it because it would it would answer a lot to see what word term I would. So if a person uh does not have has a lack of belief in god okay the belief isn't not there but he's also not willing to make a positive claim of an absolute claim what term should that person use for first himself? of all why does it why do we people why do we throw in terminology like absolute well you when you're dealing with the absolute to be an atheist, well, when, atheist. When, when, when we're dealing with people that we have these conversations with that i mean when we're dealing with people that demand us to have an absolute yeah, but you're not talking to one of them right now you're talking to me don't 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 okay, get bragged okay, over okay 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 so right, if so, we, so so if we if we say we don't believe what we're not certain we can't be totally certain but we don't yeah, believe it what should we call what, ourselves why you okay first of all get rid of the word certainty it has nothing to do with anything it just it just adds muddies it just muddies the water. Okay, look it. There's a dichotomy between A and not A. That's called the law of excluded middle. If you instantiate that with the word theist, what do you get? You get theist and not theist. Right? So either you're a theist or you're not a theist. There is no middle ground to be had that. Would you agree with that? No, because, because I, I just believe, told I just told you knowledge I mean, is not the same as the actual mean? true what, state. What the fuck you mean? There's no I, uh, this has nothing to do with fucking knowledge. This is basic logic 101. You it's, either, if you are not a theist, you're not a theist. You can either be a theist or you cannot be a theist, correct? There's no middle ground there. That, you're, talking like about, you're talking about an object about the is either an apple or an object is not an apple. Correct. Correct? Right, but your knowledge of that truth state what is the not fuck the same binary. That's what we're asking. You, you, you're so you're not even in the right stadium as us right now. You're, you're so far in left field. You're playing baseball on Mars. <laughs> one is either a theist or one is not a theist. Correct. I mean, you could you could acknowledge that, right? Uh, yes, yeah. Great. Sure. Well, that's what you just denied, Steve. That's belief, but that's belief. That's it's true. not necessarily a knowledge claim, right? Nobody's fucking talking about knowledge right now. Why? Why are you bringing in knowledge? Knowledge is completely irrelevant. To because you're chastising science. people for using incorrect terms when they're trying oh, to I'm, just. Oh, Jesus fucking Christ! Have I said the word incorrect? I'm not saying people are using words incorrect. I'm saying that if you use these terminology, you have to accept the baggage that goes along with it. This is what drives me nuts in these conversations. People keep on saying shit that I do not say. Matt Delahunty says it. Aaron Ra says it. You do it. People from the atheist experience do it. Stop fucking saying things that I do not say. It is annoying. It is it is disingenuous. It is straw manning. It's definitely it's not disingenuous. It's trying to figure out what you think we should be saying. 
what, what, what you think is the correct thing I don't thing give to a say. shit what you th what you say. You just accept, accept the responsibility for what you are assigning yourself. If you're asking me, Steve, what do you think would be, you know, how would you do it? How would you, you know, view these things? Then that's fine. Then the term would be non-theist. Either you're a theist or you're not theist. If you do not believe God exists, you're not, you're not a theist. There's a term, non-theism. Where does the I don't know fall? For sure. Where are you don't know is I don't the middle, not, where, where's the middle ground? I don't know it's not the for the middle ground. All agnostics are non-theist. Hmm. And that's and that's if not you don't know. But, okay, okay, okay. So I'm I'm beginning to understand. So you're saying that just because you call yourself that, you're not necess necessarily making a positive claim that a God does not exist just because you say that, correct? Is that what you're saying? When you say what? Yeah, I'm a non-theist. I mean that doesn't matter. that does not say that you know that a God does not exist. All, all you're saying, well, again, I, I really wish you'd stop using the word knowledge, but all you're saying by non-theist is that you don't have a God belief. That's all you're saying. Okay. Not convinced theism all is true. Is. Okay. Except theism is true. I was, just, I was just trying to figure out where you were coming from. That's all, man. If I, I came across as combative, I'm sorry, but I'm used to having to. I, I apologize, but I'm really, I, I'm so sick of, of, of people. Don't be sick of it because you're coming, you're dealing with people that have done a lot of battle with people who do demand certainty. And so we've had to adjust our language. No, I, and I get, and I do, I do understand that. I do understand that. Yeah. But, you know, I, I just. Steve, Jesus I, is I, fake. <laughs> When I get straw manned by people like my Matt or Aaron, it's very frustrating. They're very big name people, and they go on these different platforms and they say, "Well, Steve believes this." I mean, Aaron says, "Well, yeah, Steve believes there's no gods." I've never said that. He Steve Steve denies God exists. I've never said that. I mean, Aaron. I mean, well, when Matt, you call, when well, you call people disingenuous for hard fought, nuanced positions and words that they go for, you're going to get a little bit of blowback. You just have to expect that. And I and I do right. It's part of the internet. I understand that. Um, but it really is looking bad for them when people I do know my arguments tell them you guys are not representing Steve's argument properly. You you guys are saying things that he's saying that he's never argued. In, well, in you have this followers, written down somewhere. I would love to read. Do you have do you have these arguments yeah. written down somewhere? I would love to read that. If I could I, just get up I, to I, speed, I, real I quick. posted my blog in the. Uh, that, yeah, please do that, it again. Are you saying, Steve, that some gods might exist? Oh, I, I I think that some gods must exist in possible worlds. Mm. I would still love to read. Example. I would still love to read wherever you have your position written down, just for the nuances. Of yeah, it. I actually I, I literally have my positions written down. Where is that? Wait, Steve, what did like, you just say? You said some gods must exist, like yeah. imaginary worlds. It sounds like modal realism. No, what are you talking about? I'm a modal anti realist. What? Modal anti realist. So you think they exist, but they're not real? I don't understand. Oh, okay. All, we, when, when something is logically possible, and I hate to use the word by definition, but this it literally is by mathematical yeah. definitions. Um, if, you, if something is logically possible, it must exist in at least one possible world. If it's metaphysical necessity, then it must exist in all possible worlds. And if it's a metaphysical impossibility, it cannot exist in any possible world. Yeah, there's only so one any God, God is, Steve, and it exists in, in uh, the only possible world. <laughs> So, so any so any god is logically possible must exist in some modal possible world. But I'm a modal anti-realist, so I don't think those those worlds actually have a real ontology. So a modal no realist would say that. Does. It's, this is Jay. This is what's called possible world semantics. So they exist in the in the framework of possible worlds. Do they, are yeah, you asking if they exist ontologically? Then no. By the way, I put my positions. Oh, did, you, did, you, did you see it? Um, is it in general chat? Oh, uh, where am I at? <laughs> Are you not safe for work? <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, bot, Just I think kidding. bot commands. Is that? Oh yeah, no, that's not where you're not. Do we go to general chat? Oh, it's right above. The, it's right above the voice channel. Oh, By the way, I, just I, want, I, uh, I wanted to point out that it, it may be misleading to describe Seriously. yourself as a modal anti-realist because. Um, there are realists about modality who reject Lewis's position, for example. Yeah. Lewis's position was like a reductive position, but there are yeah. non-reductionists about modality who think that it's really possible that certain things are the case, it's really impossible that other things are the case, and that we can heuristically gloss this by talking about possible worlds. Um, but possible worlds themselves aren't these concrete entities you know I, i'm not agreeing with that matter of fact like i said i literally had that discussion with dr priest um over the email um not too long ago hopefully he's gonna, he wants to come on 
Um, and he's a leading expert in, on modal realism and anti-realism. So anyways, now that you can find my positions there, which are very laid out, the, the reasons yeah. I actually wrote I'm these. I'm going to read it. I'm going to read it before we have I, I want to discuss this again. But you know, it's funny. I actually first. put on here Steve's actual positions to help with straw man abatement. Go go talk to my, my followers. I am the most straw man motherfucker on the planet, I think, when it comes to these <laughs> things. I, I'm just bewildered of, of how many people can can hear me say something and get something completely really different out of well, it. You would have to consider where people are coming from who are talking to you. You would have to consider what they've already been through and establishing ways to talk about their position. But it's very, I get that, but it's very difficult because I'm like, look, it, don't bring your baggage to me. Matt Dillon. No, you can't. Always, that's not fair. No, 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 no. That's not, that's not a fair position in a conversation at all. You can't, you can't make that assumption. You have she to, can't, you have to kind of, when, when somebody says, well, agnostic, you know, uh, you know, they start back, taking all the baggage of all the things that they had conversations with agnostics. So, oh, well, Steve must believe this. Well, no. You deal with that appointment. Ask me what you, I believe. You deal, you deal with that appointment at a time rather than getting upset about it. You just deal with it a conflict at a time. Normally, but then they, every other day they seem to forget about it. and <laughs> They go back to, oh, well, Steve believes this. It just takes a lot of but patience. Steve, I get it. Steve, you just said that, that some gods must exist. You still confused about this, Jay? If it's I, I agree that that's a misleading so way to put it because it, it seems like the claim um, A must exist implies um, necessarily A exists, and for every possible world W, A exists at W. If it is logically possible, if if a god is logically possible, that is by definition something that exists in one possible world, or at least one possible world. That is what it means. Yeah, that's fine. Problem. But but you put it in terms of must, and must seems to be a modal notion that would be cashed out in terms of necessity. It is necessity. By necessity, it must exist in at least one possible world. By necessity, <laughs> not if that's what it means to be logically possible. So you're you're assuming a principle that if possibly be, then necessarily possibly be oh well i'm not gonna get the whole model logic thing so that that, that tends to wrap my head or brain around because you, you, you when you get into logic necessarily p implies you know not necessarily not possible I, the modal logic is very confusing so i'm not gonna yeah, get i told that. you guys earlier this was s5 modal fuckery yeah it's, <laughs> it, exactly it's, it's my modal fuckery it's a good way to put it actually i'm gonna, I'm gonna steal that for you from you so I, i'm not gonna get into that Michael is Michael is our is the server's Occam's razor. <laughs> Occam's razor. Occam's razor. I think possible that... worlds should be thought of as ways this world might have been, could have been. Kind of factuals. Be... Oh, Fox there, there, there... was here. Uh, you know, comes here in the morning usually, no, yeah. and uh, he, like he was talking with a theist that brought that up, and I think what he pointed out, or his his position was that he agrees that if. Uh, God is a necessary being that he would necessarily exist. But I think I, yeah, think, he, all, yeah. I think he was just asking him uh, the, I think the, the, the challenge was just what's the what's the proof that that God exists? No, what, the way it would work was this. Um, it, if he exists, uh, he exists it, necessarily, but what's the proof or what's the evidence? It is. It, if something is metaphysically necessary, then it's self-justified because it, it cannot be any other way. That I do accept, okay? But the argument I would pose to the person is, why are you arguing that it is metaphysically necessity? Because if you look at like, the argument from contingency, there's three possibilities, right? There's the, the infinite regress argument that uh, there's something brute fact, like a contingent thing, that from which all things stem from that. So it's just a re, uh, regression of, of contingency until you get to a brute fact, or there's a metaphysical necessity, and then metaphysical necessity must exist. Okay, so it's it's a justified position for a theist to argue that God is a metaphysical necessity. No problem there. It's one of the three horns of the Munchausen trilemma or Agrippa's trilemma. But the problem I have is justify why they're arguing that over the infinite regress or the the um, the brute fact. What what makes this any better a, a, a argument? Because eventually you have to end up with one of them, right? It's either going to be one of the three. What makes your argument better than the other ones? No, they're and if really you, all just the infinite regress. Well, 
if that's the argument, I hate that argument. Reduction is Because I think that necessary truths can be brute. Well, I, I think brute track. I, uh, I think brute facts can exist. What's that? I'm a foundationist. Brute. Well, I'm a foundationist, but we have to kind of accept brute facts. We accept, we accept things. Kind it, of it, I, I was just getting at it. It's a, it's a false dilemma to say that either there's some brute contingency or there's a non brute necessity because there might be a brute necessity. Uh, I don't know what that would mean. It would, it would, it would mean, it would mean a necessity such that um, it's legitimate to ask what explains it, but it has no explanation. Well, okay. Well, the, 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 sort of. The way, okay, look at, oh, I'm getting weird feedback. That is like, true. For example, if you're if you're if you're like a physicalist, and you think the mental supervenes on the physical, that involves metaphysical necess necessity. You're saying, you might be saying, for example, that it's metaphysically necessary that for any two individuals, if they differ mentally, um, then they differ physically. Um, but that might have no explanation. It might not be explained, no, I, for I, example. I, I, yeah. okay, I, 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 I totally understand you. Yeah. It's driving me nuts. I think it's Jay. Yeah, if you, no, if, that's if, actually Dr. No, that's Z. Actually Dr. Z. Can you do something about that for us? Who's echoing? It's Dr. Z. Hey, I love you. Oh, my bad. Sorry, hold on one second. Get some headphones, buddy. Okay. So, so yeah, if, you, if you're going to say the Head, root... Headphones don't help when you're driving. Uh, uh, necessary uh, fact. Earbuds do. Use uh, push to talk. If you're going to say that a brute necessary fact is something that has no explanatory power, then yeah, I, I can concede that. Because in the argument for contingency, if you accept the metaphysical necessity, that would be, in that case, a brute necessary fact for the conditions that it doesn't explain anything because God would have had two options. He would have had made this possible world some thing of higher value, saying that there's a, he had a cause, he had a reason to make this particular world, right? He, he could he couldn't have made it some other way, right? He had a reason that this was the best of all possible worlds, okay. Which is no theist is really going to pause it because that means something has a higher degree of value than than God Himself, right? Because God is beholden to something. And the other option was that He just created it arbitrarily, creating this possible world of all the other ones, which doesn't satisfy principle of sufficient reason. So even if you accept the brute necessity as fact or brute, you know brute uh, metaphysical necessity, it doesn't explain shit. That's why I have a problem with the well, no. Well, no, I mean, because if there was a reason why God, and maybe you might you be don't. making the same point, but I think like if there was a reason why God created the universe at X time and under X conditions, it would be a part of the big conjunctive contingent fact, right? Um, which well, itself if, would require a reason. It, which, would you have any infinite regression then? Of, of just for reasons or why God did this or that or why he created this possible world of all the possible worlds either you know how you look at it none of it satisfies PSR and the and the argument from contingency is predicated on there's a reason there's a whole argument yeah, is predicated yeah, I'm, on so, I'm, I'm sorry it, it's late for me I just I suppose I was asking that or posing it no me too man I'm dying I'm dying here yeah. I haven't had my coffee I'm very tired so if I'm babbling I don't mean to um, I didn't expect no to I was just asking if that was your point right like that um, you've got it Okay. Yeah. But you make my brain hurt. JJ's yeah, like got your back. No, I just shit all the time. I don't get a chance I to talk about philosophy. Much. I just want to criticize Steve's taste in coffee. <laughs> you don't know what brand I drink. <laughs> what brand do you drink, Steve? Whatever, Steve, whatever you drink, it's just not going to be up to JJ's part. I That's actually, <laughs> and just I, say I, you just just say you grind your own, and you already. I, I get the shit that shit. I get the shit the shit out of squirrels. They eat it and they shit it out. And uh, uh, no, I actually the, the, the stuff called lava that I buy. It's really good. Oh, is that capoeira? I don't know. It's just called Yava. No, he's talking about the Civet Cat coffee. But Civet Cat, uh, yeah, Civet Cat coffee. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. What, eat, I wouldn't drink that. Sorry. What, would you say llama coffee? Uh, but it's it's huh? it's 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 L E A L E A A V A. It's it's, it's Mexican. Intelligentsia from Chicago is pretty good stuff. You fresh grind it yourself. So uh, uh, it's, no, it's L E L A A V E coffee. 
Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I know. What you're yeah, it's it's actually really good stuff. Well, maybe dark round roast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you it's you it's asshole. I mean, it, 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 any, any co- just remember this: well, any coffee is really good with scotch in it. You okay. Just gave it up. You said dark ground coffee. Oh shit. JJ's oh. a coffee connoisseur. So. Waiting for you, he was wait, he was waiting for you to find out. He's a coffee cock. I put sweet oh, in oil too. JJ, you're gonna kill me because I use sweet oil. That's a new because brand what? of coffee. Sweet and low? Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't have to kill the sweet and low is gonna kill you. I don't gotta do shit. It's, it's good stuff, man. Aspartame, good stuff, man. <sighs> This was fun. Man, you guys get a lot of people in your Discord. Holy shit. Thanks for coming in, Steve. Sorry I couldn't be around for most of it. I had some shit cool. I had to do. But you, you and I need to hook up, man. What I heard, it sounded pretty eventful. I miss, I miss our little uh, you, one-on-one hangouts, brother. And Steve, we got a little heated, but please understand I enjoy the dialogue. Oh, no, it's all sometimes, good. sometimes breaking through those you know, barriers of where people are coming from takes a little bit of that, but I usually feel like we end up on something. Oh, good. totally. No, 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 no problems with it. I, you know, I, 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 and I apologize. It's, it's just that I'm so, I'm um, so Steve just Steve deals getting... with Facebook atheists. Oh, oh no! So just tell just tell people that, Steve. That's I think so they'll true. understand without they're, any further explanation. They are some of the dumbest fucking people I've ever run into in my entire life. <laughs> I think you need to say you that you also don't. deal with Facebook theists too. You know, it's funny too because um, the language uh, the, the language that we use here is leaked onto the non sequitur in Steve's channel, where he's now calling Facebook atheists white belts. Uh, <laughs> nice. There's Steve, not even that. have you met our resident buffoon, Concrete Plus? No. <laughs> oh, no, don't you. do this. Don't do this. <laughs> oh, no. This is your chance. All I want is, where's Darwin's been hiding? Who, who has mentioned my name? Sorry. Andrew, uh, next time you need to destroy Steve's worldview, and uh, next time Concrete needs to destroy Steve's faith in the server and or reinstate his belief in the power of Facebook uh, theists. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> I'm you, they're literally Steve, on the what's floor. going on? I got I got no recognition at all. What the fuck's that? Oh, is that? hold on, go Seth. down the list. Give everyone a shout Hang out on. just in case. <laughs> Who's that? It's Seth. <laughs> oh no! Did you say who after I said it's Seth? Oh, oh god damn! Oh no! Seth, I hope you've been enjoying not being here. You say Seth? Is that Seth? Why did everybody say, oh, no? Oh, it's Seth. Uh, yeah, it's Seth. What's going on? Okay. Yeah, whatever. Hey, Seth. Fucking asshole. When are you going to come down to visit me, Seth? vacation, bud. I'll I tell you what, Seth. We're going to go to the next Trump rally when he runs again? You and I? Uh, yeah, I might have to. It's funny. Like, um, Steve shows up, and then, like, all the people that actually give a shit about him, like, right out of their mouth. It's just like, what's up, you asshole? I love Seth. Oh man. my god, not this asshole. <laughs> I miss Seth, man. We used to have, we had some damn good discussions in the middle of the night, just back in the day. Oh, do tell. What was it? <laughs> well, it, it used to be all recorded, except Nadia deleted or or made private or. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. happened. To, I happened to. I I knew for a time, and was a personal friend of one of Steve's favorite porn stars. <laughs> His career? One of my favorites was... Oh, no, no, you're talking about, you're talking about Lollipop. Talking about what? Oh, was yeah, the her? one that you recently hung out with? Was her name Lollipop? Who? Th- th- that's oh, shit. Name. Am I not supposed to drop that? Oh, well, that's cool. No, well, no, I, I hang out with Brittany Simon. She's not a porn oh, star. She, look, does it, she just Steve chatted has got, like, mad tail just hanging around. I, I was hanging out with her at her house. Oh, yeah, I, I heard that house. you were hanging out with some uh, porn star recently. She's not a porn star. She does chatter bait. You link? Uh, What's your name? Porn. <laughs> <laughs> Good God. <laughs> She's still looking at me for the Not Safe for Work channel. Oh, He's never going to come back here if you guys keep going in on him like this. <laughs> What's her name? Brittany what? Simon. Brittany, Brittany Simon. There you go. Now, Jack. Jack has She's debated. She's a target of a cod. 
on our channel. She's no Emily Gray. Was she topless? Oh, but I've seen her topless. Is she a redhead? She's, she's amazing. Depends. She's a yeah. super. She's a redhead. Is a really hit it off. It was really strange. I mean, she's a, a question guy. that can only be answered answered in certain contexts. She's a feminist. I'm not, and yet we have amazing discussions. Oh, oh, she's not a bondage. Sweet. It's a way, so why not? Wait, you're not a feminist, Steve? Why? What do you got against women? Yeah. Well, I like to be against women. But, you know, but that's rude. I mean, and a sandwich, but yeah. <laughs> so, so everybody is <laughs> real. Everybody. Everybody's real respectful of the Chatterbait girlfriend, but the Twist girlfriend, but <laughs> Steve, uh, <laughs> uh, Steve has against. That's Steve has that's against. Have, have, you, have you seen the Twitches a, girls? That's a girlfriend in a different sense. Wait, <laughs> what? Steve has, somebody has asked what Steve has no, against. Girlfriend. Equivocating. Well, I feel hey, that might somebody. be the same sense as sugar. Somebody asked what Steve has against women. Hey, girlfriend. He hopes his pelvis. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> his muscle. I got something that I like. I like. He's he's like the Heimlich? Heimlich? The Heimlich? On his penis. I don't know. Ever since I started like getting popular on YouTube, I've actually had a lot of women flirting and and, and hitting on me. I was like, kind of actually surprised. Tell them if they want a fat fucking retard, I'm here. So, uh, <laughs> I'll just I'll say Jay's available. Can you, can you take my uh, excess? So I'm never to miss an opportunity to advertise for himself. Oh yeah. Uh, tell them about Tom unboxing. <laughs> oh God. Steve, what? did you watch the video yet? I'll I'll send it to you in your inbox. So that way you can't you can't miss it. It's right. really unforgettable foot. How many videos I gotta watch? I'm waiting. Steve, behind. I wanted to ask you about uh, a different kind I'm of. I catch up on Lucifer too. Steve, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, so you know the debate on a singular they versus plural they, right? No. You talking well, about Yom? Uh, if I were to say someone left an umbrella yes. in the office, uh, could they uh, retrieve it before we clear out the office or something? Or someone, uh, let's say, um, a student is uh, a student has submitted an anonymous uh, comment to the comment box or something, and we wish to give them an award. Could they please um, come to the office to receive their award? There's this another. Is... There's another. Uh, usually a plural, but also a singular non-gendered uh, non term. You know that. Wait, which? Y'all. Yeah. Oh. Okay. okay. Well, anyway, yeah. so in these examples, if the if the gender of the person is indeterminate, is they, they, anyway. Yeah. The usage <laughs> is they, right? Or use it, yeah. That's why yeah. the same thing. So, like, somebody or called, no. somebody, somebody called for you and left a message, but I don't, but I, I don't know who they were. Right. Okay. So, so that's the history of the term, and it goes back to like Chaucer and Shakespeare and others using the term. Sure. And it's pretty old, right? And of course, the debate is currently politicized because it's being and it's being debated in reference to gender pronouns for trans mm -hmm. people and so on, right? So yeah, I think it's a slur. The the people who deny that it's politicized and that uh, it's just an apolitical uh, position that we should never ever use they singularly, and that they're just arguing in a, a neutral, non politicized way, are kind of running afoul of the history of how singular he came about. Okay, well, so, you want my want my position on it? Well, I have a screenshot from an actual book. It's an example of the people who actually were the grammarians who instituted the rule. So this is a screenshot, and it says, where note that the masculine gender is more worthy than the feminine, and the feminine more worthy than the neuter. Oh, your voice changed right for a second there, but then it went yeah. away. Now, my, my position on this is very simple. Um, I don't give a fuck what a person calls themselves or what they do in their little group. You cannot institutionalize word usage to other people. You cannot mandate it. You cannot legislate it. You cannot force people to no no thing. Nothing in the history of mankind has been changed but from a le, from a linguistic standpoint, uh, legal or or brute uh, uh, persuasion of 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 these terms. Right? You can't just say, "Look it, 
this is how I want to be referred to. Pronoun for they in your group, go for it. You can't expect other people to bend over backwards if they're not to them, to, it's socially awkward to use that terminology. Maybe grammatically correct, it is. But if it's socially awkward, you cannot force your other people to accept your usage of things if it's not societal norm. I'm sorry, it's just wrong. It's politicized. That doesn't mean that you, you shouldn't maybe go out of your, some people may go out of their way to, 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 to call, like for example, if a, if a transsexual is a transgender, they're gender women, right? I call them she because they're gender expressed as she. Most people, are comfortable enough to have that kind of um, gender pronouns for he and she. They and them is very unwieldy. It's, does it, it, it doesn't roll off the tongue as well. A lot of people are uncomfortable using it. And, and unfortunately, the reality is, is it, and I hate to break it to people, this is, but this is a biological fact, there are only two gametic sexes. Female, there are no other gametic sexes, none. If you have to go to a doctor and say, I, ha I am either this or that, the pronoun could be based upon that or it could be based upon your gender, gender, but many people are not going to go out of their way to use terminologies like they or them. It's just not going to be happening right now. Maybe decades from now, times have changed, sure, but you cannot mandate somebody to do it and say, well, if you don't use this, you're verbally assaulting me or you're, um, you're, 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 you're transphobic. That's just bullshit. That's my position on it. Well, my, okay, that's kind of getting off on... A tangent from the original question, which was just, is singular they appropriate in situations such as indeterminate gender, yes, which course. it was in the language and has and is still in the language? In Who, that. Why would they argue otherwise? You never heard me argue otherwise. I just give you an example. Right? It, it, somebody called well, and they left You're message. talking about imposing things on other people, which I'm not really talking about. I'm just talking about the arguments on, on the merits, not the imposition of those arguments or by force like, or coercion. Have you, like that. Have, you, have you ever heard me argue otherwise? Well, here, here, the point I'm making is that there is a claim made by people who think that the the generic he is the correct usage, and they make the claim that it's purely to avoid ambiguity and so on. Um, but the in original grammarians, well, hang on, the philosophy in philosophy they, they default to she. So yeah, the, the different people do it differently, right? There's okay. a there's a variety of usage, right? Okay, but here's yeah. here's the reason I'm bringing this up is I think this might be kind of similar to how you view the the debate around the term atheism or agnosticism, right? Mm -hmm. and so on the one hand, you have people making uh, you know justification for uh, generic heat, and they're doing so on the basis, oh well, it's because of uh, you know amb preventing ambiguity, right? Mm -hmm. we, we're going to use. Uh, you know, if a, if someone wants to come to the office, he should do so, even though they're female students, right? Like that would be strange, right? Mm -hmm. But a lot of people are, are still insisting that that's what that's what we ought do. But the original grammarians who instituted the generic he and who made it a thing and who tried to oppose singular they actually did so based on arguments like the one I just posted, where they actually said the male sex is superior to the female sex. Okay. Um, and there's a bunch of examples of this. There's four or five grammarians who primarily and, like shoehorn uh, the language the way that I'm not they disagree with any of that. Right. But how does it tie into agnosticism? Okay. So there's a usage which people are arguing about uh, on technical grounds, but the original adoption of a, of one of the usages was uh, was unapologetically adopted on what you might call politicized or or extra, extraneous grounds. Right. So in virtue of the fact that we view men as superior to women, we also think this grammar rule ought to be the case. And then the next generation of grammarians discard that or aren't aware of that, and they're arguing it just on the ambiguity argument. But they, they've lost the fact that the, the original reason for the adoption was politicized and unapologetically so. It's just people forgot. So do you feel like that's kind of what happens with the term atheism? Is that people are using it as a political rallying cry and oh, they're not uh, I, I, acknowledging the history of I it guess being so? No, I get what you're saying. And, and no, I, I don't think so. What I think they're doing is they want to arbitrarily... Are, what is that paper noise? They, they want to arbitrarily inflate numbers. And the way they do that is by assuming agnostics. Um, most people here, I think everybody in here agree, I use the term agnosticism text to how it's used in the literature. If anybody disagrees with that, please let me know. Um, I have a long conversation with you, but I have, to this date, I do not recall any philosopher telling me that I do not use these terms uh, congruent with literature. Yeah, 
I understand what you mean, and I, I, I right. agree that that's one possible explanation for why they're doing it. Okay, so, um, so well, let's go from there real quick. So I'm, I'm using the term correct. I'm using this. I, I, I don't want to say the words correctly, correctly with respect to the literature, but I'm using them like a biologist would use the word evolution, right? Here is, oh, well, you know what? We're going to use colloquial definitions. Um, I'm just going to use the word evolution means change. I'm just going to use the word theory means guess. Sure, you can do that in your organization. If you, if American atheists want to use the lack of belief definitions, they're more than welcome to do so, right? I mean, what the hell? But again, they have to accept the baggage that comes along with it. But what I get tired of is they're prescribing to me that they're telling me I'm using the terminology wrong, their words wrong, that I'm using it incorrectly, their words. I'm I'm basically don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. This is the narrative that American atheists and the ACA have put out about me. And that's what I take umbrage with because that is completely bullshit. It is politics. It is demeaning to me. It is marginalizing me because they do not want to accept my argumentation because a lot of them don't know how to, to begin to, to, to even be, have a rebuttal to it. But everything that they have just said about me when it comes to that is completely and utter bullshit properly. I am not incorrect with respect to the literature. And I do kind of know what the hell I'm talking about on it. But you've seen it. You've all seen it. Matt said, you're wrong, Steve. You're wrong. Now, now yeah, what I'm, not, I'm right? not disagreeing with your take on it. What I'm, what I'm saying is that when people are making an argument about the definition of something mm -hmm. on justification grounds, and they, mm -hmm. they omit or, or sort of won't acknowledge that there's a politicized history to the reasons for the adoption of okay. their particular definition it can be frustrating oh, oh, I got you. oh i know okay i see where you're at now um okay so let me catch up with you yes then in that case there obviously is political reasons why they use the word atheism the way they do and and agnosticism um those are politicized that's been that case since 1972 it started really with the presumption of atheism by anthony flew george smith wrote a book called um a case against God. He he pricked up that mantle. It kind of ran a little bit with Martin and uh, Bolivant, but and Silverman. Um, but yes, the 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 whole thing for ACA and atheism sized. But here's the thing: I am not a member of the ACA. I'm not a member of American Atheists. I'm not a member member of the American Repu Atheist Republic because I do not like the politicization of these things, and I do not like. The ideology and i do not like the dogmatic way they've gone do i think they do good things do i think they're really good at arguing against religion and harmful things and, and things of that nature yes absolutely but at what cost and and what's worse is when you have like you know ar kicked me out um matt dillon blocks me and matt dillon uh, you know, arn blocks me um yeah, well, Silverman won't even have a conversation with him. I've talked to Silverman. He's like, eh, whatever. Uh, Navabi won't have uh, Atheist Republic. Sorry, I've heard you say that twice now. Navabi won't have a conversation with me. He's been on the show before. He's going to be on again. But he won't talk to me about this topic. He thinks it's already a done deal, right? Not one of these people, not one of these people, they all they all have debates. And, and I'm not saying that I want to, but think about this, IX. Every fucking one of those people debates people all the time. They have discussions with any theist that comes along and challenges them just about, right? Well, not all of them, but they, they'll have conversations with people that disagree with. Mm -hmm. Not one of them has tried to shut me down. Not one of them has says, Steve, you're wrong. Let's have a discussion. I'll show you why you're wrong. None of them. You know why? And one of them could bring to the table any citation that's going to back up anything they say, and I do, and they damn well fucking know it. And I'm convinced of that now. Before I was, I at least given the benefit of the doubt. I was kind of arrogant by what I just said, and smug as, as Matt would put it. But at this point, I don't give a fuck. It is the case that I see it that way, and not that I want to have a conversation with them. Me, bullshit. That oh well, you know, you know, Steve, you're using these terms wrong. Aaron literally has been saying that the entire last couple of days. Steve, you're wrong you're using these terms wrong. Then I change his mind on one of the terms. His mind on the other term, I get blocked. I'm done. I'm done with that. I am going to try to to talk to the people that I can convince that want to have intelligent conversations, and that wants to go actually learn the, the material. I had to learn it. Why can't them? And I think a lot of them are noticing that. And I think a lot of them are going, hey, guys, at the American Atheists or experience or whatever you know you guys need to like need to reevaluate positions and it can't, for example do you know now ix knows this in every atheist experience video it has a disclaimer on the bottom 
something along the lines of we define atheism to include the position of agnosticism. Do they not have that? Um, I haven't noticed it, but it may just be that I'm, I see it so many things that I'm blind to it. Uh, well, let me it, it, it's there. Maybe you want me to go read it to you verbatim? I can, but yeah. I hope you accept our render that it's there. And the reason they have that in there is because of arguments like this that Ozzy and other people like myself had, had been talking about, right? Because Ozzy's been, been doing this forever. So they put a little schema there and, and they're by stipulating. They're, at this point, what they're saying is that by stipulation, we're going to include agnostics. So now people that don't know these topics read that and go, oh, look, the atheist experience includes agnostics. That must be the case. It cannot be any other way. Steve, you must be wrong. Where is the uh, disclaimer? Is that at the bottom of the video at the beginning or where? We define atheism as a lack of belief in gods. This definition also encompasses what most people call agnosticism. But like, where does that appear? Is that the beginning of the episodes? Uh, no, sounds it sounds like, like a description. It sounds like an accommodation. Oh, like they're trying it's to accommodate. No, it assumes. Assuming atheism, well, uh, agnosticism into atheism. Colloquially, there are agnostics that lean towards atheism, which, like I said, are something like an atheist yeah. agnostic. Yeah. And there's agnostics who lean towards theism. Um, I agree with you. But it's up to them to decide for themselves. It's not something that someone else can say, oh, you're a theist. I totally uh, agree. You're an atheist. But, but, but here's what I want to leave you guys with. And, and hopefully people are going out and they're spreading the message on this, stuff like that. The arguments to the fact that exist that exist in the literature exists materially. All I am concerned about is do people understand the material in context to the literature? I try to understand it properly. I go to the people that know these things to understand it properly. That's all I give a shit about. If they say, hey, look at Steve, you're totally right with respect to the literature, but I'm going to use it this way. Okay, we can have a different discussion at that point, right? That there's different arguments to be had. But when they're telling me I'm wrong, that's when they're going to have backlash. That's when I'm going to look at them and say, you know what? I'm going to hold your motherfucking feet to the fire like I would any other prequel, theist, or creationist because what you're putting out is fucking wrong. And I have the citations to prove it. Right? You talk about evidence. Go look at my citational list, right? It's it's ridiculous. And that's not even a fraction of the shit that I've read on this stuff. I ask, has you ever seen any of them present to me a paper and say, look, Steve, you're wrong. Here's a paper. Not that it would I prove me wrong, but it would at least be. I don't know all the things that you've talked to them about. Biology, they have. Okay. RNA gives give me biology papers. Fair enough. But we didn't yeah. disagree on that. We were, <laughs> I actually asked them for um, there's some citational work on uh, ATB synthase. You never hear him quote anybody. You never hear him use any. And then I get, oh, well. You're just an argument from authority. Well, goddamn right it is. So what? A citation. It's called a legitimate argument from authority. Is that I'm saying something and I'm supporting it with citation. I'm not arguing that their position. I'm arguing my position and I'm backing it up with citation. Atlanta means me by saying, oh, well, Steve just you know argues everything by argument authority. No, I don't. No, fuck you. I don't. I don't do just, that. Uh, just curious. Why do you care so much? That's a good question. <laughs> That's a fair question. Um, I, I, I care because I, and this is going to sound really strange, but I want atheists to be better at, I want atheists to take a higher road. I want atheists to not be Facebook atheist because I have seen so many goddamn stupid faith, a fucking atheists on Facebook that are the dumbest people I've ever seen in my life. I want people to get away from that. And the only way you're going to do that is to build a strong foundation and understand the concepts from the beginning and then build upon that. If you decide to, to take a different approach and, and you want to use the more colloquial terminology, okay, that's your decision. But you cannot... It seems to me that the that the that if they have this little blurb where this little uh, you know qualifier where they say, when we say atheist, we, are, we mean to include agnostics in with us. Right, but why would that you do that? Seem, that doesn't seem hostile. That seems the opposite. That seems like it's in deference to you and the point no, you're making. Because agnostics are not atheists, Helena. Agnostics are a separate category. They're not theists. They're not atheists. They're, they're you're saying you don't like that they're doing oh, that. But because the, it's the not meaning. true that they're deceiving, right? They've heard you, no, 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 and they're, they're doing what they can to it, accommodate what you've said. No, 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 Helen, you have it completely wrong. 
statement in congruence with the literature? No, it is not. Second of all, of, as an atheist, no, I do not. I am an agnostic. Why, why do I want to be called in the same group of people that are agnostics or atheists? Uh, I, I, for non-beliefs, that's fine. We're all non-believers, right? But what they're saying, they're saying that Steve, yeah. you are you are an atheist because you're an agnostic. All agnostics are atheists. That is bullshit. That is David Silverman's bullshit that he put out ages ago that people have been putting out that narrative and is fundamentally fucking wrong. Yeah, and I can agree with you on that. And I do think non-believers are more appropriate label for the, uh, any larger community that includes yes, both. It's more inclusive. Yeah, of course it's that's more. Fine. Of course, I'm not. I'm not saying it yeah. isn't. I'm just saying that we don't need to <clears throat> have a fit over this. I don't think. I, I disagree think that with it's you. It's perfectly acceptable. There's nothing wrong with people calling themselves lactias. Meanings of words change with usage. You can call yourself you know, whatever you want, want Helena. Listen to me carefully, Helena. You can call yourself whatever you wish. You have no right to call somebody else something. You have no right. You have no uh, people have no right to call me an atheist because I'm not. That's like a theist saying, Helena, you're a theist because of Romans one. You're a theist. All all men know God. You're a theist, right, Helena? Well, let's let's say I made up a term, yes. Steve, and I called it a, a philosotheist. And a philosotheist is anyone who holds one of the philosophical positions or the theological positions in a philosophical sense, precisely, mm -hmm. uh, and holds to those definitions. And I could label any philosopher who is either a theist, an agnostic, or an atheist as a philosotheist, mm -hmm. meaning just this arbit this proprietary definition I just made up, and it would be accurate in describing you and Ozzy and probably anyone else who uses the philosophical definitions. And yeah, if, we accept, if we accept, yeah, this goes back to that argument that Aaron had with that, that Christian guy. If we accept those conditions for the properties of that category, then yes, we would, we'd fall into that. Not a problem. Right. And I think that's what so, someone's doing when they're labeling another person is they're just saying how they perceive that person. And like you have every, reason to clarify to them if they're mistaken because they're misunderstanding or mischaracterizing you I agree with you but here's the thing I, I i get that i agree with you but here's the thing when when people say steve you're wrong logically you must be either atheist or theist how wrong is that statement mentally practically wrong but yeah I, wrong. I feel like it's as wrong as when uh, darth dawkins comes to somebody and says there's no such thing as an agnostic Thing. Because I either God is the source of all of the universe, or, uh, or that was not. the dumbest argument I ever heard him say. Well, his second yeah. dumbest. The, you know, the dumbest <laughs> well, he the dumb... even says there's no such thing as an atheist. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, the, the dumbest argument Darth has ever made is when he tried to argue that affirming the consequence was a lot was a, ra a, a actual rule of inference. 